Uh, oh, wait, what? Ah, hello. Uh, yes, we're live. And here I am, staring at a corner. Have you seen the ending of the Blair Witch? It's pretty much this thing. Yeah, that's right, it's spooky time. Hello, and welcome to the Dangus. Uh, can you hear me? Is the audio working? We are joined here with uh, Phil Barnes. Hello, Phil. How you doing? All I heard was like a little digital fart. Can you say something again? Mr. Mr. Burns? Uh-oh. What have I done? What have I done? Phil, I can't hear you no more. Phil! Are you there, Phil? Phil has disappeared. Perhaps he's been abducted. Abducted by... aliens. Phil, are you there? I swear he's here. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Phil! Phil, no! They've got they've gotten to him! What do we do? What do we do? Where do we go? Anyway, uh, it's, it's Halloween. Oh, wait, I can see Phil, you're talking, but I can't hear you. Hold on. What about now? Oh, yeah, okay, I, I can hear you now. Just just a button. Uh, hello, did you hear my intro? No. <laughs> I'm... I, I said good evening, I'm Phil Barnes. Um, I'm, I'm good, but I'm, I'm tired because I've been working today. So, But uh, tonight we're going to play some Dangus. Well, when you're tired and you're on the edge of sleep, that's when the nightmares come. And today we're going to be looking at some spooky places that will send chills into Phil's bones. That's right. It's Halloween time. Have you done anything? Are you doing anything spooky for the Halloween? No, not really, no. Not my thing, really, Halloween. But uh, the, the kids at school have been, uh, you know, well, the, the other students, and they're all younger than me, uh, have been decorating their classrooms with spooky stuff. They are more modern than me. Spooky. Spooky. Sorry. Spiders and stuff. Oh, yeah. Cobweb. Like, spiders are, like, spooky year-round, though, I mean. I got, I got arachnophobia. They are pretty, uh, they bother the heck out of me. You can see here, I've got this beautiful uh, dolphin, equipped actually with a spider on its nose. And all decked out for Halloween slash taxi passenger missions. So the idea of how this is going to work, what I fi figure might be interesting, is we'll pick up a passenger here at Tiedman. Uh, I don't care where they're going to go, then we're not going to take them there. We're going to take them on a spooky adventure. So ideally we're looking for someone that's laid back. Um, they all have different personalities. So why don't I go get a passenger? Are you are you at uh, Teedman, by the way? Where you are? Where are you at in the Elite Dangus uh, universe? Well, I've been sending you team invites, but no response. So I've been going to Dangabus. I don't know where you are. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Send, send me uh, send me another team invites. Team invite. But since you talk about passengers, I'm guessing you're a Tiedman. I am Teedman. 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 Let me invite Valor to the team. I see him. He's in the system as well. Dark Heavy is in a cans doing the doing the mighty BGS, which is cool. We actually won another war, and now we have uh, Dangus Investigations has another system under our wing, which is super exciting. We are expanding. All right, so I, I guess I'll, I'll walk through this build actually because I thought like like you were just saying that before screen. The dolphin is one of the the best explorers in your opinion. Um, Indeed, yeah. And it's like, I don't do that much exploring a dolphin, but I've managed to tweak it out to a, um, a 50 light year jump range. Hey, what up, Ray Mobula? How you doing? Are you scared yet? Uh, I've got uh, heat sink launchers, just because, you know, when things get hot, you know, you need to cool down. And frame shift wake scanners, just in case we find anything interesting. And then pretty much tried to go everything lightweight. Had to do some engineering on the frame shift drive and the power plant. It's not, um, no experimental effects. So it's, pr you know, could be improved even a little bit more. Uh, but in terms of what we're packing, I do have some cargo racks, but just one uh, first-class passenger cabin, frame shift drive booster, fuel scoop, and I did pack a shield generator just in case we do bump into uh, stuff, because that might be a thing that happens. The scary so thing so far is Phil. You're scaring people, Phil. Uh, yeah, I'd normally do that well, honest, all, all year round. Have you seen the movie Midsummer? Uh, I have not seen the movie Midsommar, but I know about it. I just saw it the other uh, last weekend, and um, it's like I never thought I'd be afraid of Swedish people. <laughs> it's like it's like folk, folk horror or something. That's like the genre. Yeah, it's basically you know a bunch of Americans go to Sweden to uh, spend time with like this little cult or whatever, and uh, and then things happen that I won't spoil. But um, 
It's an interesting. I'm guessing it's Pix. I'm guessing it's Pix. It's gotta be the Wicker Man. Uh, it, it, it's similar to the Wicker Man in, in terms of like like what it covers. Like some... But but you know, it's 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 certainly like it stands on its own. It's one of them A24 films, which are all pretty you know. Um, pretty decent in their own right. There's one that I really want to see called Lamb or something, and it's like about, like, a half-human, half-lamb baby. Lamb baby. I have not personally seen this one yet. But they make some interesting films. Uh, anyway, so what we got here? We got, uh, for Dingus Investigations, we could take a thing, but I'm worried that we're probably going to fail this mission. Um, so maybe it's better not to, to fail a mission for someone else. Okay, this person wants to go to the Marvel of Youth. They are cowardly and laid back, which is fine. Laid back is what we're looking for. But where is that? Which, by the way, if you don't know, on the passenger missions, you can actually click the galaxy map. It'll show you where they want to go. Uh, that's actually, like, really far out of the way. We're not going there. I have an itinerary, and if you look in the YouTube comments, you'll see the systems that we're going to go and what's in each one. So if you do want to come along with us, or you want to just uh, do this trip on your own, all the information is available. Alright, let's see Let's see what we can find here. That's not Dangus. Let's just feel like everyone but Dangus. Uh, let's try to find someone that's wanting to go far. Because usually you get like a, a three weeks to complete it. Ten hours. He wants to go to the Moussaka Visitor Be Beacon. Is that where you get fine, fine Italian and Greek foods? I'm not sure. Wayne Robles. What's your profile? Oh, stoic and impatient. No, no, no. We don't, we don't want impatient. That means they're going to complain if we take detours, which the entire trip is going to be a detour for them. How about this dude? Stoic and impatient. No, sir. Yong Sloan. A medical officer. Stoic and patient. No. Otto Vang. Okay, he wants to go literally one system over. Stoic and patient. Damn you. Everyone here is just. How so can you even be stoic and patient? Sto well, it's stoic. Does, is doesn't like, stoic. Stoic is like. Can I mean patient? Stoic. Is, I want to get there quickly, but I don't. I don't. I don't care how many like uh, people we have to kill along the way. Oh, Ray's out um, in his dolphin by Maya looking for void stuff. Uh, we will be heading kind of into that area. Um, we'll be going to some Thargoid bases today. Ooh, how about Pete Coffee? Stoic and impatient. Why is everyone so impatient? Le I'm so stoic. Liliana Payne, a cowardly, impatient politician. How about no? Titus Nunez. Cowardly and laid back. Okay. Low value target, neutral and demanding. Which means he might um, ask me to pick up some clothing. So do you want to go shopping? By the way, look at that. Look at that helmet. What is that? Is that just like a visor? Looks, it looks like a poker uh, poker dealer. I think Titus Nudis sounds like a good place to start. He works for the Bologna's Jet Crew, too, so if we piss him off, we're just, you know, hurting a pirate faction. He wants to go to all these places, but we're not going to take him anyway. Any of those. We're going to take him on the spookiest trip ever. Alright, Titus. You're our man. Alright, now we got a, now we got a passenger. Titus, are you ready to be on the spookiest journey that you've ever been on? Where is he here? Well, you can't really look inside your cabin. I wish there was, like, a little passenger screen. Like, if you look down in your nav panel, you can see, like, your passengers here. Maybe little animations of them. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah, so, pretty much, uh, we're going to start by going to the Dejinda system. Uh, a lot of the initial um, places are actually very, very close to Bologna's. Hold on. Am I uneconomical? Should be able to get there in one jump. There we go. There we go. Yes, I was uneconomical. I wasn't economical because our last week I was in the Fertile Lance, and, you know, that does not have a very good jump range. Um, but yeah, so I would say, Phil, uh, if you are, are you uh, on the way to Tidyman or are you got docked? I am docked, yes. We'll just grab your own little passenger. Someone that you don't mind upsetting because we're not going to take them where they want to go. We're going to take mm, them don't, on don't have a cabin here. Oh, you don't? I'll just be your, you know, like a fighter escort. Okay. Like the Cobra. Yeah. You, you can protect Titus here. 
I wish it gave you the names. I mean, does it show under transactions? Okay, it does. Titus Nunes. What are the payouts on this? 3.6 million to visit three locations? Like, I don't think so, Titus. That's not enough to get me out of bed. Alright, so we're gonna head to the Dinja system. So, the first couple places we're gonna go, the, and, and really the object of this stream is because Frontier is doing a little variant on their stellar screenshots uh, competition, which is like a screenshot competition. And basically, they're looking for spooky, uh, spooky photos. So, we're gonna try to basically find the spookiest locations that we can and then take uh, photos that would upset Grandma. That's the plan. It's a little uh, photography. Related stream. But yeah, um, check out the list in the description, and if there are any other spooky locations that you can think of. Uh, some of the places that we'll, we'll go, which are pretty obvious, like Jameson's Demise, some Thargoid structures, some Guardian bases later on. An abandoned mega ship, a crashed anaconda, and lots of crash ships. Um, but Valor made a really good point where um, if you go to these uh, settlements, and hold on, we're going to be here to Willie's Folly. I have to find it this way. Um, but if you go to settlements, the SRV headlights actually go through the walls and actually can create some very interesting um, photographical situations. So we'll be taking advantage of that. Now apparently this first place is called Willie's Folly and it's an abandoned settlement. I'm just going to have to... There it is. And it's all the way... Oh god, 36,000 light, light seconds. Oh my god. What have I done? And I am in a dolphin. Go to the bathroom, find a mirror, end stream. What? What? Are you saying, like, go have a hard look at yourself? Do you not like dolphins loot? The dolphin is a beautiful, majestic ship. And look at this. Look at this ship. With that ship kit, and I've got the taxi paint on it, it is a, it is a Halloween liner in the top 0.01%. That's right, we're raising the bar. I'm in the top 0.0001%. Isn't it pretty though? I do really like the dolphin. And actually, you know what? It is a fantastic exploration ship. Number one, it can fit a big fuel scoop. Number two, the jump range is excellent. Number three, it runs cold. And then Phil, you were making a point too. It's easy to land. Super yeah, it's a really good um, exobiology ship because some bios will only appear in super rocky areas and. Your crates and asps and condoms are gonna struggle there. It's, it's not the best jumper, but it's good enough. Uh, it's immune to heat. You cannot overheat it, how much you try. Um, it also has really fast, uh, you know, normal sp uh, spe space movement. So if you're looking for bios, then you can run fast over the surface. <laughs> it's agile. Yeah, it's everything. And it also has the same amount of internal slots as the crate. Just, just smaller slots, but the same number of slots. Oh, really? I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I got. You know, great. I was just running to. I, I have 98% power usage, but like I could engineer it higher and put like an AMFU. I actually have one slot where I do, just don't have anything in it because I wanted that jump range, that sweet sweet jump range. 50 50 light years. That that is a pretty good jump range. I think anything above 40 is good for an ex exploration ship. But yeah, you can get what what is it like 78 out of a Creek Phantom. So, yeah, I so think you can be pushing around 80, yeah. Eight, around 80 with the version 2 FSD thing. And then, of course, there is the, the infamous Jump Conda. I mean, really, no one has a... Oh, oh that, that reminds me. I'm actually going to jump my fleet carrier ahead of us. Because all the areas that we're exploring in this area are going to be in um, Bologna's. Or, like, in proximity Bologna's. But I want to jump my carrier ahead of us to HIP 1409. Uh, how do I do that? I have to go into the side panel. I do like that you can actually, like, send your carrier while you're in the middle of doing something else. That's kind of cool. Alright, Dangabus, you jump ahead. You go there. And actually, can I put you right at the place? We're going to be going to two places in this system. 2A is where we want the carrier to go. I'll explain when I get there. Uh, the dolphin is good for guardian sites, especially those in mountain ranges, because of its small footprint. Exactly, it's tiny, tiny feet. That way you can actually drop and land. Without, especially navigating on those bumpy terrains, which Odyssey is full of. 
But yeah, Halloween is coming, and this is definitely the, the most exciting uh, holiday that I care about. I love the idea of just like, you know, let's dress up as demons and go shake down the neighbors for candies. It's not a big thing uh, in, in Sweden with Halloween. I mean, some people do it, but mainly because it's like an American and imported and yeah. hip thing to do. Yeah, I think like, like I don't know what it was about North America. Like, how did, how did it originate? I think it was like actually an England thing. It originated in England Probably, yeah. and was like imported to North America. And now, now we're exporting it around the world. Now, to be honest, I haven't been trick or treating since I was a, a child, a wee one. But I think I think it would be a little bit unnerving if just like some middle-aged person shows up at your door wearing a costume. <laughs> Can I have some candy? But you know, it's like once you once you get to a certain age, you switch from uh, you know going around and shaking the neighbors down for candies to getting to scare the kids that do come to collect. I remember one one year, uh, me and my best friend we uh, were handing out candy at the door of his house, and when they would ring the doorbell, we would chase each other through the room with a knife, and then one of us would put on a bloody shirt and go to the door and say, "Yeah, oh, sorry about that. I was just uh, in the middle of something. Here's some candy." We actually had kids like running away screaming. It was quite hilarious. Watching their little minds <laughs> break apart. <laughs> Poor little children. You should have also trick or treating for adults, but instead of candy, just give beer. Oh, yeah. I would love that. Just show up at a stranger's house, be like, trick or treat. It's like, yeah, come on in for a beer. Yes, indeed. What a world we would live in if that were the case. Uh, Yurin has thousand tiny feet and walk around. I wish I could animate this as creepy stuff for Halloween. So you have like a dolphin millipede edition with like a thousand tiny feet? That would actually be really somewhat creepy. I don't know what it is. I, you know, like, like I'm arachnophobic, right? And like most bugs, I don't have a huge issue with, but they do tend to like creep out some part of my brain, right? And I think it has something to do with anything that has more legs than me. The more legs, the creepier it is, right? You ever see them house except centipedes, the little fuzzy caterpillars with the centipede legs, and it's like, oh. Except cats, they are not creepy. But they, yeah, they only have two more legs. On the, they're a little bit creepy. <laughs> they do have weird glowing eyes in the, uh, in the in the night. That's true. So Titus has his first demand. He wants domestic appliances. Well, Titus, I don't know if we're gonna, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but maybe maybe Willie's Folly has some domestic appliances for Titus. But I don't know. It's an abandoned settlement, so probably not. And if you don't uh, feel, uh, fulfill his demand, he will not give you a five thousand credit bonus. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, it's fifty four thousand credits, but that basically is like five bucks in inflation terms. Yeah, yeah that's a fleet carry upkeep for one second. Yeah, yeah, that'll buy me a handful of limpets. Which no, I don't have any limpet controllers on the ship, unfortunately. Well, oh, I haven't even set my bindings. Hold on. Uh, one scanner. I like to put all my scanners just on the same binding. How does the dolphin... Wait, how does a dolphin turn a female commander upside down? Do, do tell. Flipper, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's good, Digger. I like it. That's good. Flipper. Uh, I should have seen that one coming. It was definitely going to be some sort of dolphin-related pun. But you know, like, like you know, dolphins uh, are aggressively sexual. You want to be careful if you ever encounter a dolphin in the wild. It will boop up against your ship unwillingly. They have very hard, firm uh, uh, cockpits, shall we say. <laughs> Didn't... <laughs> Didn't you do like a dolphin, a dolphin sort of scary thing in an old video? Uh, I know I did like a dolphin duel once, and I've probably done like a dolphin stream where the object was just to ram people. That was like a, one of the one of the very first videos. You were talking about dolphin horror games or a dolphin crossover horror thing. Well, anyone? I mean, Any other Dangus fans out there? I know there was like uh, like Echo the Dolphin was like an early set of games I played on the Sega Genesis. And Echo the Dolphin, I don't remember if it was one or two, actually did scare the piss out of me where like you had this one level where you had to like go up into the sky through these weird like jelly streams 
and they were like evil jellyfish and it was truly a terrifying experience as a child though not terrified of the dolphin like you were the dolphin it's more the terrified of the sky jelly jellyfish but i don't know if, if anyone else remembers it like I, I i have forgotten half of my own lore there might be some old episodes that i'm just like oh yeah i did that I mean, it's been years and years in space. This is why we keep these space diaries. You think, you know, Captain Kirk would just be like, yeah, um, remember all the incident, all the weird energistic uh, space anomalies and like aliens dressed as Napoleon that he encounters in a week? He's got to write that shit down, Captain's Log. All right, we're coming into Wooly's Folly, and I don't know who this Wooly is or what, um, what his folly was, but this space might be a reminder or a testament to Wooly's own demise. I do like that there are so many uh, bases that are called someone's folly. And it's like, is that like a, a, a common thing that we like to name our, our, our bases after a mistake that we made? I don't think so. It's like Ferris Bueller's unfortunate misfortune. But it's like, if you were naming a base, would you call it Spatula's Folly? No, we call it Spatula's Land of, of Fun and Bread and Honey. And burgers. Spatula's Purgatorium. A folly? A folly is like a fool's, fool's thing. Like, I did a, I, 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 his folly was his downfall. It's like a fool. The act of a fool. Maybe maybe he was foolish because this base is abandoned, so obviously something didn't work out. Now this is not an Odyssey base, I believe. This is like one of them little horizon settlements. Look at this. Just a tiny little shack. Oops. Uh oh. What have I done? What have I done? See, this is why I need shields. <laughs> so there is a scanny thing here, actually. Can I scan this thing from my dolphin? could just like get close enough there we go so yes you can do this from your ship correct industrial firmware awesome and encrypted files all right let's get out and uh is this good lighting or wait should i try and set up my ship lights and philly i try and want to make some spooky a spooky look here i think maybe lights from this yeah. side Let me put clips to shields before I get off the ship because I think I need the shields back. All right, I'm just gonna disembark my spacesuit. Yeah, me too. I, I can't drive my SUV. Um, unplug my stick, and now my controls are all gone. Resets. Oh no. Yeah, set. When you have to go through the bindings again, it's like, oh my god. Okay, yeah, I'll see you in a couple days. Exactly. This is gonna take some time. They say like always, you can back up your bindings or whatever, but uh, I never do that. So why is this location spooky? Because it's abandoned. So I, I see. So what we're well, I mean, it, it, I, I, so I'm actually planning tomorrow to go to a real abandoned place here in Toronto. There's a place called Ontario Place, which had like a log flume and a little theme park, and it's long since been um, completely abandoned. And you can still walk into it and actually go see like the old log flume and everything. And it's like common place for like urban exploration so what we want to do is try and find like a spooky angle so each of these locations we're going to try and get a screenshot and then this made the spookiest screenshot be the one that we submit although i don't know if you can submit multiple let's just see what kind of angles we can get of course i'm wearing my skeleton suit you can see some of the panels are starting to rust over because it's not what happened. There's so much oxygen here that rust would actually happen. I'm just sarcastic. I don't know if the, is the roof spooky. What's, the basements are spookier. Let's see if we can find an angle. Like sometimes spookiness is all about perspective, right? Yeah, 
come to some Everything is starting to fall. The beauty. Actually, Phil, where are you? No, behind you, in front of you. It's right here. Do you want to go, um, how about you go to where this, like, uh, what do you call it is? The data, data machine. And then go the on computer. the other side. Yeah, go on the other side in the light. And then I want you to take a pose that makes you look scared. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want you to <laughs> interpretively dance fear. Um, so okay, uh, look towards the other way that you're looking. Yeah, okay, okay. Now back up a little bit. Get right next to that pole. A little bit to your left. Okay. Put away your gun. Uh, I have to go with the controls to make that happen. Good, just, just <laughs> One hold, second. Hold down your reload. Piece. I think that puts away your gun. Mm, nope. One second. Stand by. Or just like, uh, oh, I don't know. Look at this amazing uh, direction that I'm giving. It's like a uh, famous photographer. I want you to do that. Do I'm, I'm going to take another photograph, but I want you to be more, uh, more better. <laughs> more better. No pressure, right? Okay. So yeah, look right th uh, there. Maybe turn a little bit to your right, like five, six degrees. No, no, that's seven degrees. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, and now maybe crouch down. Okay, perfect. And maybe look a little bit, about five degrees actually back to the left. Or about half, right about, yeah, a little bit more. Right about there, right about there, okay. And then tilt your head up a little bit. Like, let me see a little chin. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, maybe down a little bit. Yeah, just about there. Okay, a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Down, down, down. More, more up and down, okay. No, down. Less chin, less chin. Okay, right there. And now a little bit, like, three degrees to your left. That's good, that's good. Okay, now hold that spot. And hold on, let me, let me reset my angle here. Hi, I'm acting. Now, if you could just... I'm, look, I'm an actor now. If you could just look more scared. Just be, uh, like, be like, really scared. Like, just quiver. Quiver with rage and, and, and uh, terror. You're a tiger now, okay? Oh, I love the quivering. That's great quivering. Okay, just keep, keep, keep quivering. It's, very, it's actually a very creepy shot. Perfect. We got it. We got it. Love it. Actually, let me see if I can show those screenshots and I'll... We can actually, like, review the work as we go. Hold on. Oh yeah, my mouse went really slow. Screenshots. Let's pop this up here. Excuse me. Uh, let me add... Uh, no, wait, not image. It would be like window capture. Screenies. Okay. And let's do this. Is that gonna work? No. Don't think it did. Or wait, hold on. Can you see it? No, you can't see it. Hold on. Use the SRV light uh, breaking lights to get some spooky light. Ooh, great idea. I love it. Uh hold on. 2301 JPEG. Can I show that? No. Okay, I'll show them at the end. I'll figure it out later. Because that's obviously not working. But yeah, okay, actually, we'll, we'll do it at the next location with the SRV lights. But I think we got good ones from this location. At the end of the stream, what I'll do is maybe uh, see if I can do like a screen share or whatever and then just like share all the photos. And we can maybe vote on which are the best ones. I love it, love it. All right, back to the ships. Ooh, also the dolphin has like a red and a green one. What would the green one look like? Maybe it's a bit too Christmassy. How about red?
Uh, I think all ships have that, at least some. The Cobra has it too. But not as fancy. I'm gonna look like the Terminator there. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. Alright. So these little facilities are interesting. These are uh, carryovers from the Horizon days. But this one, I don't, I don't even know if it's been visited. Like, when I looked at the data, it was like almost as if no one had ever visited this location before. And it's like, even in the heart of the bubble, there are just so many little facilities on planets that you don't know where it's coming from. But uh, the next place we're going to be going is the Urvacini system, home of Ray Dockway and Baker Landing. But we're not going to be going to either of those places. We're going to a place called, quote-unquote, the Inferno Center. I don't know what they make. Maybe spicy, uh, spicy tacos? We'll find out. It's supposed to be spooky, right? Not terrifying. Now I understand why DH8 is not there. Oh yeah, he wanted to take off his helmet, and then I told him, like, guy, I don't want to get banned. I can get banned from YouTube for being too scary. There are children out there! Alright, heading to... some cruise. Unfortunately, the planet is in the way. Look at this nice little chocolatey planet. It does look like I could just take a spoon and take a bite out of it. Chocolate planet. I remember uh, in Mario Kart, there was that chocolate level or whatever. Where it was like, uh... Choco Falls or something like that. And it was like, oh my god, I always got hungry when driving in that level. I just want to lick the waterfalls. Approaching the area where it will be jumpable. Spooling the FSD. It looks like while we were there, the carrier uh, completed its jump, so that's great. It can meet us at the, uh, the end location for this leg. Leg. So this next place is interesting. Like there was no known location to this. It's a place called Inferno Center. And these are one of them space facilities. But the installation is an, a, of a type, quote-unquote, unknown. So what it does, what its purpose is, is completely unknown to mankind. We would be the first people ever to be brave enough to visit the Inferno Sector. Because it is 40, oh, another 41,000 light seconds away from the star. What does the, the galaxy map say about this? A faction-known installation structure of vital importance. So it's just like a mercenary activity. Oh, no! Crashed into the sun. As you do. Though notice I'm not even above 50% heat. That's thanks to this amazing dolphin and its uh, heat handling methods. You crash into a star and it's like still like, oh man, I need, I need to wear a sweater inside this thing. All right, now I have to wait for the penalty before you're able to jump away. I was not paying attention. Alright. Jump in and zipper cruise. That's hilarious. But yeah, I've had a pretty busy week. Yeah, Phil, you said you're tired from, from uh, all your shifts. I uh, went to Iron Maiden on Tuesday, which really, really great show, especially in the lead up to Halloween. Uh, they do uh, quite an amazing performance. I actually have four tickets for that, which was super exciting. It was my second time seeing Iron Maiden, and oh my god, they, they're just a spectacle. An absolute spectacle. And then, um, not last night, but the night before, I went and saw a very interesting band called Captured by Robots. And the, I guess the TLDR is it's a one-man band with two robots. So one robot, which is a drummer and another robot, which is the guitarist and bassist on a double neck guitar. And the robots literally like play guitar. Like there's like mechanical servos that like move up and down the fretboards and actually hit the cymbals and the drums. And then the one dude just like, it's like, uh, like sings while uh, the robots play backing music. And there were some crazy moments. Like, uh, uh, like they literally brought out a coffin and there was some coffin and crowd surfing. It was a pretty crazy show. Probably one of the most interesting shows I've ever seen. I know about these guys. I've seen them on the, the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 
live it was uh absolutely incredible uh very funny like again like like it's one of those concerts where you're you're smiling as much as you're walking out to the music i smell too strong for your fear <laughs> i like it all the smells we should have like a a, a smell sensor and it's like your computer goes hmm the space smells like dirty dirty type nines dirty drives Dirty, dirty drives. Oh, you've been sick the last few days. Oh my god. 15 to 20 hours per day. I mean, hey, that's, uh, you're catching up on sleep at least. Hopefully you're feeling better though. That sucks though. I know what it's like when, you, when you're so sick that you're just like, I, I sleep all day. But I, it's been a while actually, like pre-COVID, I remember getting a flu and just like, three days, all I did was sleep and then wake up, go buy a popsicle, crawl back into bed. That's all I could do. Like, just buying one popsicle and eating it was, like, all the energy that I could use. Good evening. <laughs> Turn the spell sensor off. I just farted in my suit. I can see that out. I had a little episode about farting. Looking back on that, I'm not sure if that was a good idea. <laughs> Exactly. Well, hibernation is like a real thing. I don't get, like, I think it would be awesome if you, like, can you imagine a world or a timeline, like an alternate world? Like, by the way, they should reboot the show Sliders. I think that was an awesome show. But imagine an alternate timeline where all humans hibernated through the winter. Where, like, at the end of October, everyone would kind of just go to bed and then wake up in the spring. And we didn't have to deal with winter. I would love it. I would go for that. You'd wake up very hungry, though. After six months of sleeping, I have a woken. That would be an interesting. Should idea. be fine if you're like, if you're cry freezing, you should be fine though. Oh, true. Like if, 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 if we did that. like science hibernation. Yeah, yeah. So let's like put ourselves in the cryo and then just like. Right when everyone wakes up, it's like, here's a nice glass of orange juice and a dish of pancakes. That would be great. Wake up day. And that would be an interesting, like, sci-fi movie if, like, yeah, like, if the future became so overpopulated that it's like, you know, like, we won't have enough food to last through the winter, so we're just going to make everyone hibernate. But one man decided he did not want to go to sleep. He is the Winter Man. That could be like an Omega Man kind of plot, right? It's like one guy decides not to go into cryogenics and then just like lives through the whole winter all on his own. Maybe meet some other humans that don't go into cryo. And they go, yeah, like, we haven't needed cryo for like the last hundred years. But now it's an AI that rules society. There you go. That's the movie. Where's my money, James Cameron? Give me money, James Cameron. Life is short enough as it is without wasting several months of your sleeping. Okay, but if that if that didn't affect your life, right? Like if, if you could live to 120 years or whatever, um, because when you're sleeping you don't age, then it would be okay. Because like winter is a waste of time. Because most of the time you just don't want to go outside. At least in Canada, in Canada winter is brutal. I'm sure in Sweden it's uh, probably you know pretty harsh too. It is, but I think Canada is worse. Certain areas of it. Logan's Run versus Soylent Green. Isn't Soylent Green like human meat? What was that from? Is Soylent Green actually like a movie title? Or was it in... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The name of the movie is Soylent Green, yeah. Okay. This dystopian movie about, yeah, yeah, about that stuff. Who's in that? Is that the Planet of the Apes guy, Charlie Heston? No idea. Who plays the Soylent Green? Who do they eat? Batman? Batman? I don't know. <laughs> that would be an interesting, uh, yeah, like, we killed Batman and now we're going to eat him. He's probably prepared for that though, he has a contingency, where if you eat him you just become Batman. The Dark Knight has a plan for everything. Incoming hostile detective? Uh -oh. I think that's maybe the, the event thing, right? Oh, is there going to be a war? 
There's a food company uh, called Soylent? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Is it like soy and lent soy soy milk and like lentil beans or something like that? But they're yeah, like, it's like a, but they're like the from, damn powder people eat. But it was like started by some millennial and they never knew that phrase. Or is it actually human meat? Uh, in the movie, it is. Yeah. 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 It's not like gonna overpopulate the world, so yeah. everyone's got to eat. I don't know if I could ever be compelled to eat a human, even if it was, like, consensual. I don't think that it was a good thing. <laughs> for, for survival, I think, yeah, most would. If it was, like, the alive situation, like you're trapped in the Andes, and you have to eat some dude's frozen butt, okay, maybe. If you're trapped, if you're trapped in a future dystopian society. I mean, it's like, yeah, like, uh... When society gets so bad that we gotta eat, eat people. Alright, what do we got here? So, interesting. Okay, this is a big one. So, I guess the... What is the lore on these... It's an unauthorized installation. Like, what does that ultimately mean? Like, no one no one lets it do it? Not even eat a girlfriend? Well, that's different. The Matrix scooped up liquefied humans as nutrition idea from Sterling Green. Wait, what? Did I miss that part of the Matrix? Like, I don't remember. Did they eat people in the Matrix? Or is that like when the, when the people were being fed through their tubes or whatever, it was like other people? Ooh. Maybe the new Matrix. Ooh, we got a nice big. Uh, I haven't seen it. The new Matrix I actually really liked. I thought it was interesting. Like again, it's like don't try to recreate what you what you did because you'll never succeed. But uh, they did an interesting meta take. I could see how a lot of people were not super happy with it, but I thought it was cool. So we got a nice red gate here. It is kind of creepy. I'm trying to just... What is that? Ooh. Is that just like a random bar floating in space, or no? That actually connects to the building. Interesting. It was actually kind of creepy to uh, come out the other side. Um, the tunnel. Like going through the tunnel? Yeah, yeah. When you're coming out the other side. Alright, I'll get some screenshots going through the tunnel too. I'm trying to find the creepiest angle. That's kind of creepy. Actually, maybe let's just try it without the ship in the way. Because actually, the tunnel itself is quite a. What a creepy little thing. Welcome to the Inferno Center. That looks cool. And everything else is like purple except for this one little like red gate. Is this the portal to the hell dimension? Or is Raxla somewhere hidden in here? Worse than rats. Wait, what? <laughs> Are you saying eating people is worse than eating rats, or eating rats is worse than eating people? So I'm gonna try to get a nice little angle here. Now let's lock the camera on the ship. Oh yeah. And let's take some screenshots as we go through the tunnel. This is rather creepy, actually. Just snap, snap, snap. Look at the back of my dolphin. Oh yeah, okay, actually, I, I do like that lost gate as well. Because there's no stars, you just see the planet. It's just coming back here. And then we got the Tacosa song. It sounds like very Iron Maiden inspired. I just want to head off to this. Let's try and find like an action shot here. I think that's a good angle. I heard someone smacking. Was <laughs> that you? Yes. I right. may be stuck. Alright, I'm you're stuck? Use your landing gear. I'm out. 
just popular uh, indicator uh, on and off. Hey. Like change directions. Landing gear is the, has the magical uh, Schrodinger equation built into it, so it actually like pops you into another dimension temporarily. I don't know if I don't know if everyone knew that, but that's uh, that's real science. Um, okay, so I'm gonna count down to three, and then I'm gonna start slowly moving through this um, vaginal-shaped opening that does look actually very creepy. Um, and then I'm gonna start taking screenshots. So when I count down for three, if you also want to go through the opening, feel free to join me. I'll give you a second if you want to line up your ship. Um, I'm good. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit. I screwed up, I screwed up. I kept hitting something, I don't know what. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got kind of uh, disoriented coming through because you, you d don't see any stars, just a blackness. And then there's like a scar in yeah. the sky. And it's planet, and I didn't realize it was planet, I was shocked. And actually, you know what? Like, the dolphin's taillights kind of look like spider eyes. Like, from a distance. It's just, like, kind of creepy. Oh, wow, there's sure, a, lot, yeah. like, a lot of ships here. I didn't realize this area is so crowded. By the way, a scary place for in-game uh, place for that site. They chopped up... Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That place where they chopped up the Thargoids. Oh, you mean, like, the uh, like the open point or whatever? Like, those salvation things where they did the experiments, the inward bases? YouTube have eaten the previous message. I guess having eating and people in the same sentence gets the message automatically moderated. Did it? Damn you, YouTube. Why are you so prejudiced against human cannibalism? Alright, I'm gonna try one more variant. Inside. Someone's scanning me looking for goods. All I've got is this poor, poor passenger who, who literally, like, just wants to go to some tourist beacons, but he's like, what have I what have I got myself into? Like, like, sometimes just like, like simple signal, uh, symbols look creepy to me. The slowness of the dolphin progressing is kind of creepy. I mean, it could be, maybe it's like just the, the, the shapes of the interior, but I find like those, um, the things inside, what are they called? What do you call these things? Little gateways? Like, there's something creepy about looking down rows of things that go, like, further and further. You can't really see where they end. I like it. You forget the name of the place. Yeah, I don't remember the name of that place either. But, alright, I feel like we've got some good screenshots here. But actually, this is a kind of a cool facility. Let's just take a little bit of a walk around see if there's anything else interesting. Now, this is an unauthorized facility, so it's pretty much, like, basically a pirate base, right? Yeah. Here's a cool little circle. Very red and purple. I don't know if this is creepy, but it's certainly cool. Yeah, I don't know if this is creepy. It's like calming, nice. Though I do like, okay, hold on. The redness in the cockpit. What about interiors? Look at that creepy face. Okay, he looks bored. <laughs> I do like the redness though. Ah! Are you okay? Oh, oops, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. 
Are these Cobra are like, too fast. These are like radiator panels. If you smack into them too fast, like, do you actually like hurt them? This one, oh, yep, yeah, I blew it up. I think it's cool that you can just like smash into radiator panels and destroy them and the little bits go flying off into space. And then you can play with those bits. You have a game of space soccer with some debris. Here's another little opening. What's in here? Any spookiness? Oh, it's a curvy one. Oh, it's a double curve. Oh my god, it's a triple curve, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's a quadruple alternating curve. Wow, okay, this is actually like, I've never seen a pathway like this. Oh my god, it keeps going. Wow. Now, can you imagine actually being able to, to use those in combat and like make it through in one piece? Would be cool. I'm gonna do it one more time. Boop, and down, and then boop, and then down, and then to the side. I like that, it's twisty. Oh my god. Okay, we still have some shields. Zero percent shields, excellent. That is cool. All right, well, let's go on to the next place. So we're at Urvisani. The next place we need to go is a place called Thoth. And there is a crashed ship that we can check out. And I hope it's on the night side of the planet. Because that'd be nice and creepy. This tunnel oh. is like Mario Kart, but with ships. Sorry, the what? The, the, the tunnel there in the, in the installation is kind of like playing Mario Kart, but with spaceship. That's true. I would love if we could have like a default racing mode that we could also still use like weapons for, but design like racing weapons that shoot behind you. Like shock mines would be perfect for a race course, right? If it was a contained race course and you could smack someone off track. They need banana to... peels in space. Oh my God, yes. I would love to see like banana peels, but like rather than like slipping up the ship, they like clog the cockpit. Like limpets that are just attracted to glass. And they just all pile onto your cockpit so you can't see. You can't see too good. Let's see, two more jumps to Thoth. Might as well de-scan along the way. I'm gonna take this passenger all the way back to the destination, just let them off and say sorry. Yeah. I didn't want I didn't like your agenda, sir. But yeah, so the place that we're going is is a place on uh, the planet 1A, and it's called Transport Lake Transport Lacon Baker Gamma Sierra Heavy. So BGSH. So this is where the BGS crashed one day, and all of the systems were thrown into chaos. I find it funny that the BGS is the uh, um, acronym or whatever. BGS H. What does the H stand for? BGS Heavy. Oh, oh no, 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 no. When you switch from ships where you have Discovery Scanner bound to one most button to the, and then to another ship that has a different binding, that happens a lot. Okay, I need the sweet, sweet, precious boost juice. Nope, did not get it. Give me that supercharge. There we go. There we go. Do you, do you notice sometimes a lot of the times this um, these jumps are glitched? Like sometimes no matter how long I stay in the beam, I just can't get a supercharge. I don't know if that happens a, to a lot of you guys. It is a strange <laughs> acronym. The only word there that's from the NATO alphabet is, is Sierra. Gamma and Baker is not in the alphabet. It's Bravo and Golf. That's true. That's true. So I wonder why they named it Transport Bacon, Baker, Gamma, Sierra have it. Maybe, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know if this one has a log or not, but maybe there will be logs and they'll explain themselves. Although I don't know if there's ever a log to be like, this is how we named our ship. That would be a fun one, though. Alright, so we need to go to Thoth 1A. And there's actually a distress beacon close to it. Let's just go to that distress beacon. Someone is scurred. Let us find what they're scurred of. Can you imagine if we encountered a Thargoid Titan just randomly in like a normal distress beacon? 
That would be spooky. You never know. The developers are sneaky now. They're able to hide things in the, in the code as they um, update them. Like, they did this update for, like, tweaking the FSS so that you could hear the Stargoids kind of thing. But it was a pretty large update, so I have a feeling there's a little bit more, more than meets the eye there. And it's like, you know, we got like two weeks basically until quote unquote, you know, November comes and this, you know, next update, which could be a pretty big one. I mean, who knows? But I like to think, I like to think we could be getting something pretty interesting. But hold on, Thoth 1A would be like the moon, right? Yeah, it would be this one. The tiny one. What's a tiny little nugget? Look at this, look at this little baby planet. <laughs> That's a very scary baby voice. If I scared you all, I apologize. All right, we're gonna drop it on this Discrest Beacon to see what's up here. I think we might have to actually like scan the planet to see the uh, ship. Or perhaps this is one that like no longer exists unless you're in Horizon, I don't know. Oh wait, this Distress Beacon is actually a listening post. What is going on here? Have we stumbled onto a mystery? Let's see, decaying beacon, distress signal, ship trajectory terminal, estimated landing site, negative 2.7 by 16.67, critical damage to thrusters, long range communications, and damage report system. Beacon orbit decaying, signal lost. So we need to go to negative 2.7 by 16.7. I like these breadcrumbs where you get a little coordinate. You have to then like sort of do some actual detective work. By the way, look at this planet with its rivers of urine. I like the coloring on this. It's okay, I'm not seeing anything show up. We could essentially try poking it with probes. Let's see what happens there. This is only a two prober, so no big deal. Let's see what we got. Crash ship. The probe has done its job. Okay, it's like right there. Alright, heading down to the crash ship. It is unfortunately not on the night side, which would be great for creepier, but who knows, maybe, it'll, maybe we'll be able to see it more clearly. It could be a good thing. There's a lot of uh, splotchiness on this planet. Switching to glad. Actually, weirdly enough, now it's not showing up. It untargeted itself. It doesn't want to be seen. Alright, we're coming in slowly. Did you uh, read the text on that distress beacon, or was it the listening post? Yeah, that, that one's the one that said decaying beacon. It basically gives the ship trajectory, and then, like, you know, there were damage in the thrusters, communication, and their damage report systems. Which, like, that sounds like sabotage to me. Like, those are three pretty, like, you know, like, odd systems to malfunction all at once. So it looks like it is a Type 9. And there is a little bit of, I think the front fell off. Is that a movable piece, or is that going to be stuck to the ground? Let's try pooping it. No, it is stuck. Kaboom boom. Alright, now I think I will get the SRV out for this one. Just considering it's not on the night side, we want to be a little creative with our lighting. And that was a good, that was a good interesting tip, that the, the back of the SRV actually creates like a red glare. So maybe we can use that to create some ambiance. I mean, as much as like night planets are creepy, sometimes like being able to see you're on this like giant desolate desert planet in and of itself is pretty uh, creepy. All right, we do have a data core. Let's scan that data core, see what happens. Maybe we'll hear the story of this ship. Let's 
So, transport ship, Lake On, Baker, Gamma, Sierra, Heavy. Committed Cargo Manifest, 519 units of historical novels. Secrets of stimulating, simulating backgrounds. What? So literally, this is called the B, the, the, the Lacon BGSH, and it was carrying historical novels that talk about simulating backgrounds. Hmm. As well as seven units of liquor and 11 units of explosives. <laughs> Cargo bay temperature critical, fire suppressing system not working. So I'm guessing what happened here is these guys were doing some BGS research on how to move a faction to, you know, maybe move the dark wheel to, to uh, Seoul or something. Someone decided to get drunk in the back, lit off the explosives, and that crashed the ship here. Okay, that's hilarious. I, I do have the scoop on this if you want to hear it. Yeah, please. There's a Canon uh, Science uh, website for this, um, or entry for this thing, and the text reads that this is an easter egg placed in the game, a clue to the distress beacon above the planet was given during a live stream on the BGS with Commander Dad. Awesome. So this literally is a little target cheek uh, BGS reference, which I think that is absolutely hilarious. Dav is the guy working on the BGS. Uh, he's uh, yeah. also the guy who named Dav Soap. That's awesome. All right, uh, I'm gonna turn my SRV lights on maximum beam. See if I can get a nice little. I'm trying to think where would be the creepiest angle. Now this is really funny, actually. I love little things like this. Easter eggs, in, in this kind of game, like there's so much space to put Easter eggs. Maybe something like kind of looking this way. So you can see the front of the ship buried. All right, let us get out. Unsafe temperatures. Well, that doesn't mean I can't get out. It just means, uh, watch out, you're gonna die. As you can see, my health is starting to tick down very slowly. That's okay, I have med kits. Okay. I should be a little bit quick on this. These like SRV tracks too. I just like that like idea of like a killer staring at the camera. I think that makes it everything a little bit creepier. And then Phil just jumping in the background. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I love it. That's great. I feel like I got a good one. Like this, I wish it was on the night side. It definitely would be far creepier on the night side. But that's okay. Ooh, Geyser's here. And this is a very low G planet. What's the gravity? 0 0.08. This would actually be a good one to try and get to orbit with uh, Geyser's. It's a tiny little moon, but there's a adjacent planet nearby. There's Phil on top of his uh, purple cobra. Come here, Phil. No, don't shoot me! No! How dare you? Why are you only at... Oh, yeah, yeah, you're getting heat damage. I'll leave you to burn. Interesting that we just came from a place called Inferno, whatever it was. Look at that. My, my <laughs> Everything is fogged up to the point where <laughs> my whole character looks blurry. It's steamy down here. All right, well, the next place we're going is another space-based installation in the Tepanik system, and it is at planet AB3, and it's called Litchfield Center. And this one is interesting because, yeah, again, like the other one, I think the other one was unauthorized, and this one is, like, unknown. Which probably just means another unauthorized one, but it could have different creepy passages. That will only be, what, three jumps away? Beautifully. And then we start kind of heading towards the uh, Pleiades. 
But I love this. This is like a little Easter egg. A BGS, a, a ship named BGS that was carrying historical novels on background simulation. Amazing. See, Elite does have humor if you know where to look for it, right? It may seem like a cold, dark universe where the stars are unkind and black holes are uh, trying to ruin your day. But uh, every once in a while, there's a fun little reason to smile. Where do we need to head here? And I do love like the idea of like these permanent distress beacons. Though there's really nothing that says like this one's a permanent one versus just a signal source. So you really, you know, you really gotta pay attention to what signal sources you're seeing before you honk in a system. You never know what they're hiding out there. Let's see if we can zip over here. jumping. But yeah, after all these uh, concerts, my hearing, I'll tell you, um, it's like I forgot my earplugs for, like my, my friend, I forgot my earplugs for Iron Maiden, and thankfully a friend of mine had an extra pair. I didn't have one for the, uh, the show on Thursday. And Captured by Robots is like hardcore punk in a very small venue, so it's like the next couple days I think I'm bringing ringing in my ears, but uh, I think it was worth it. If you ever get the chance to see them, and you know, you can, uh, you know, I think you also have to kind of be into punk music. Uh, it was one of the most interesting shows. Uh, you bought yourself a Type 9 recently. Hauling Onion Head is a lot more pleasant now. It's rather hard to dock though, gotta find a couple times. But find for what, like smuggling? It's fine for the Onion Head? If that's the case, bring it on down to Tidyman Dock, where uh, Dangus Investigations will take all the onion head that you want to dispose of. Although, do we have a black market? In Tidyman? How do I check that? Hold on, I'm gonna jump. But yeah, definitely, um, the Type 9 that I've got on my carrier, I literally have an unnamed Type 9 that's just filled with cargo space just for moving tritium from my inventory into the ship. And it's like, the Type 9 is wonderful for that. I think there's only one ship that can hold more cargo, and it, or no, it was one more ship that could hold more cargo, which is the Cutter. And then they rectified that. So I think the Type 9 is like, the, the, the beast with uh, the most hull space. Is that purple beast? Um, yeah, highest uh, theoretical uh, cargo space. All about that type nine. We do have a black market at Tiedemann. Yay! I think the one that we often don't have is the uh, the search and rescue one. I don't think we have that guy. Though really, why do you want to give your occupied escape pods away to a guy who's just going to pay you like a couple credits and you don't really know what the point of it is? Feed them to Thargoids, our friends the Thargoids. Who will hopefully spare us when the Titans arrive. Because you know that's coming. Yeah, I was thinking, I'm like, should I just, like, go out on an exploration trip? Or do I want to be in the bubble when it burns? I don't think they would do anything that would, like... Oh, there's a Federation capital ship here. Like, I don't think they would do anything that would, um, potentially, like, actually, like, um, kill people if they were in the bubble. Ooh, Ohm Terminal. There's a lot of carriers here. Alright, let's try to find this from the, uh, the system map. So we're looking for AB... AB3. Which is this one. Interesting. And there's actually a fleet carrier called Apocalyptic Punishment in orbit of that system. So I don't know, we might have stumbled onto a cult here. Sounds like a suicide cult. It's only 3,000 light years away. Or light seconds. Why are the Federation... Why is the Federation here with a capital ship? You got fined for unauthorized access when flying out of the station. Got stuck in the mail slot. You type 9 is stealthy. You engineered it to run cold. As you do. That's a... Uh, any smuggling ship wants to take advantage of extra heat sinks. And, uh, you know, go shieldless. Go silent running. It's the way to be. So actually, we're actually very close to a permit lock system, Ross 354. And I wonder, um, 
Where do you get the permit for this one? Is this one of the ones that you can't? There's a great system name, Iran Dan. Iran Dan. Let's see here. So there it is. The Litchfield Center is where we actually want to go. This could be a little nice little scenic place. Now, I've never won a stellar screenshots, but um, Frontier is a really cool skin for the ass that has a Halloween theme. And I'm pretty determined. I wanna I wanna I wanna win that. I wanna get the ultimate spooky screenshot. After this place, we're actually going to another unknown settlement, I believe. But we need to find, like, an abandoned, um... Like, one of those places where you have to, like, restore and repair the power regulator. And I don't think I have one of those on my list, so we might have to just go to a nearby station in this system and see if we can find one of those missions. Is this one I... I want to get one that has, like, water leaking and, like, fire, moldy pipes, asbestos, broken bottles, the songs of small five-year-old children, and an otherwise empty hallway. That kind of vibe. Alright, we've got a real dark planet here. It's charcoal gray. Resource extraction site. Oh, there's rings! Ooh! Is the Litchfield Center in rings? No. It's like on the other side. Hopefully we'll get a good view from within there, like show these rings, because this looks cool. That carrier seems to be parked very close to the rings. Tepanik AB3. Let's see what, the Litchfield, what they're doing at the Litchfield Center. I have a feeling that they summon demons and perform uh, satanic rituals where they uh, sacrifice and eat goats. Either that or um, trade commerce. Both equally anus. Heinous. <laughs> I would say, always pronounce heinous as uh, anus and then correct myself. It's not intentional, I assure you. Okay, so we got more red gates. Okay, so I guess the, the, the common theme is whenever the the station is unauthorized, they get these, like, red doors. Which, honestly, we already got screenshots of this, but it's still pretty creepy. Or is this any different? Yeah, on this one, we don't have the, um, like, dark planet right through the other side. Where is that planet? Oh, there it is. Is there like another gate? I think this actually might be the exact same layout as the other place. How about, can I go in here? What's this? Oh, no. Nope. What is this? Oh, these are the little cargo bays that you can hack. But I think in order to hack them, you have to do something first. Or, well, you need limpets anyway. Let me in! What is that? Oh yeah, let me scan it. Are there any, like, lore beacons here? I guess just hackable comms array, but for that, again, you need lipids. A lock, I do not have lipids. Okay, hold on. There's a red door there. The planet's there. Hmm. I'm just gonna boop here. I'm just gonna boop, boop it nice and nice and on the bottom. Okay. What if I get like a side angle? Can I see the planet? Where is planet? Is it literally like? On the other side. Okay. Is that creepy? What about on the other side of the store? Let's move up and through. There's just 
have like the, the like, little nose of the dolphin poking out. Oh, you can't really see the planet. Oh, wait, there we go. There we go. Okay, that could be interesting. Let's do a little rotato. I don't know if this is creepy, but it's certainly neat. I might try to actually see if I can also get a slightly better angle. Yeah, definitely these red doors look cool, but yeah. Um, the next place that we have to go is close. This one, okay, so this one is an under unknown settlement on the ground, but it has the two plus signs. So I'm assuming, oh wait, no. I'm assuming that that means it is um, like one of them Horizons places, right? Is that what the two pluses mean? Uh, it has something to do with like the security level or the dang dangus level. Oh, true. Uh, I think yeah, and that would be that would mean horizons. I think I don't know if other sea settlements also have the plus thing. I'm not sure of that. Well, I guess we're gonna find out now. If we don't find, because what I'm really looking for is like one of them abandoned bases. If we don't find one there, then we'll just have to like see if we can find one on the fly. I definitely want to uh, play around in an abandoned base because, like, Takosa was showing me some screenshots he got. Oh my god. It's so beautiful. Or, well, in a creepy way. And that's what we're doing today. We're being creepy. Alright. Uh, we are looking for. Oh yeah, I don't know where this is. It's called Sarich's Sarix Reach. But there's actually no known location. So this what was interesting about this one to me was it seems like no one has ever visited this place. Like there's absolutely no data online as to this settlement. And there still are a lot of places that just people haven't gone, right? Well, but but the name is known, so someone must have been there, right? I guess. Okay, it's so like it, in those uh, like in those fantasy games, like, no one has seen this thing and lived. Well, how do we know about it? <laughs> because of all the bodies. They get sent yeah, back like, to turn to sender. Yeah, but like, lo knowing the name and the looks of it and stuff. That's true. Well, I mean, the developers obviously know. They know everything. There's nothing they don't know. Except how to fix power play. TPC. But they know everything else. They know all about all of the settlements. And I am hoping that there are like new settlement types that will start popping up. I do actually like like how you, you sometimes go to a, a settlement that you haven't gone to in a while and you're like, oh wow, okay, I actually like don't know this layout. But I'm starting to run thin on that and, and now it's kind of like I know um, too much. If they're to add new settlements in the game, then maybe uh, we'll start getting places where it's like, oh, I don't know, I'm lost again. So there's a compromised nav beacon in this system, but no, uh, no stations. All right, we're starting to discover things. At Cerex Reach. Also, Cards Folly is on the same place. So this is like. Uh, more more folly. None. I don't know. Sorry, what? Yeah, more folly. So this is like no appropriate landing pads. I assume that means because like it's abandoned, right? Because I'm in a small ship. Like, how can you not have small pads? We shall find out. Oh, and wonderful! It's on the night side. That would be good for ambiance. At least I think it is. That's the hard part when you're like, okay, I want to go to like creepy places at night, but nothing out there gives you the data on like what side of the planet is this thing on. 
that's just something that I, I think it's probably like too complex and too specific so no one's like tried to like sort through that data and again it changes so often right but it would be cool to have some sort of tool where it's like yeah what what is daytime on dinner that hollow when is nighttime like per quarter someone out there wants to develop it, I will pay you five dollars. That's a fair price, I think. <laughs> I kid. Alright, we're heading down to Sarah's Reach. What do they do here? Are they experimenting on human biomechanics? Are they capturing and torturing people in uh, psychological experiments and mind control? Or is it a bakery for the local pizza shop? Let's find out. Right, coming down on the reach. Okay, I actually think this might be a Horizons one. Maybe it's just like a really small settlement, because I only see like three buildings. Will this be tiny? Or maybe it's just not like at scale yet. Is this a Horizons facility? I think it is. Uh, yes. Because it's not blue in the panel. Ah, okay. Well, I have my HUDs all screwed up anyway. We got defense turrets. Maybe they'll be okay if I land here. Some of these places are restricted. This place does not seem to care. So here you have like a, a set of doors actually. And I'm pretty sure you can get those doors to open, but then usually that's where it gets mad at you. The system map doesn't show the real day night cycle or... No, I don't think it does. I don't think it's accurate. Alright, I'm not going to risk getting my SRV out, because I don't want that to get blown up. Just in case. This could actually be kind of a cool shot. It's like approaching the big doors. Is that you, Phil? Oh no, it's the skimmer. I got no, I'm in orbit. It's weird though, um, your shadows disappear when you turn into camera mode. Or wait, no they don't. I just couldn't see it very well. Let's see if I can even go back further. Like this is sorta cool, but this ain't, this ain't gonna win the competition. But I'll add it to the bank. Yeah, the gravity's a little bit stronger here, 4.47 Gs. Don't know if I'm going to be able to scale this thing, but we'll give it a try. Let me in. No! Hmm. I'm going to need a ledge. This looks better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? Ooh, pipes. Are pipes creepy? Pipes are kind of creepy. Yeah, kind of. I mean, would you want to be in a pipe? But why do I hear restricted area? Was that me? I heard like, we'll find out. like restricted area and I'm like, I don't know if that was me. Oh yeah. Someone's on the loudspeaker. So now I'm on top of the wall. Oh, I see you down there, Phil. Hello. Hello. 
to me, Wade? Let's yeah, I can. Like. Okay, actually, you know what? Can you go, like, stand in front of the doors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, stand right there, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, yeah, right there, right there, right there. And let's see. <laughs> I love how you, 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 you clap with, like, a straight spine, right? And it's like you're leaning backwards. It's my punchline. Yeah, just like stare up at me. Cause I, I do like the idea of like, oh, yeah. there's always a guy just like standing in the background looking. I know you like red, but Frontier obviously likes corrosive green. Focus on that. <laughs> it's true. There's lots of pipes over there. Oh shit, yeah. Hold on, we gotta go check out all those pipes. Stop yelling at me, speaker. Okay, I need light. I think that speaker is like always active. Oh, is it? I guess so, because if you hear it, then you will be in a restricted area. Just need to be like a 3D sound. So now there's like a bunch of pipes over here. Ooh, yeah, okay. I like the ambiance under these pipes. Do you want to come under the pipes? What what pipes? Where are the pipes? Uh, just walk towards me. I don't know where you are. Uh, I, will I don't have a flashlight. I think I see you on the radar. It's like on the left of the door. Yeah. I don't have my Artemis suit on. I don't know if I can get up there. Oh no no! Don't don't get up there. Just uh, go where my flashlight is on the ground. I'm trying to stay Ooh, I'm getting... in the beam. I'm getting bounded trespassing and the, the alarm is off. Uh oh. What have you done? I, I, I trespassed. Where are you, Phil? You're 100 meters like. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, I think you went inside the facility. Yeah, Ooh. I did, yeah. They're mad at you. They're not doing anything, though. <laughs> just, just mad. Writing angry notes. That's kind of creepy. I like the. So what do you want me to do? Um, so basically, uh, where are you? Sorry. Still inside. Okay, you want to come? Like, come up back to where the ships are. Are you still? Are you like inside? Yeah, I will try. I don't know what what button is bound to. Are Just controls. Inside? Do we need to rescue? You? Uh, I think I can make my way out somehow. Phil is ranked up with Bounty. People are mad at him. Okay, I'm on the wall now. Okay, so we look for You're... me on the pipes. You can see my flashlight going disco, full disco right now. Oh, I see you. All right, so I want you to go where, like, kind of where my flashlight is on the ground. I don't know if you're able to see with that detail, but so uh, I just... think I am. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And then just like, yeah, look up. And I get a few different shots. Turn your your flashlight on. Oh, you're being shot. <laughs> I'm being shot. <laughs> Put your shields up. I don't know see. how to do that. <laughs> By uh, bindings. I try C. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, should I kill that thing or just no? It's a skimmer. Uh, just let it shoot you a little bit. It can be cute. <laughs> it can be cute. Okay, I'm here again. Trying to get like a nice silhouette here. Yeah, just like stay still for a sec. 
Can you turn your light on? You don't know how? Uh, I can check the... Try L. The... L should be the default. Nothing happens. Hmm. Um, sorry. No, 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 that's okay, that's okay. Do your thing. I'm trying, trying to shoot you, Do the thing. thing. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get spookiness out of this angle. I think I might Too be far away. Are they attacking my ship? Mm. Or is that you? M most, mostly <laughs> me. I think they just keep spawning though. Do they not? Or, or, or if you kill all the skimmers, is it like game over time? Warning, we are trespassing. We will write a strongly worded napkin to someone. I'll find the, the bonnie for the, the flashlight. One second. I love how they're not shooting me, though, for once. It's T. It's T? Mm, button T, T button. It's T to flash. Like, what does that stand for? Like, light? Alright, so yeah. Fla right flashlight. Now. I want you to come, uh, yeah, kind of turn to your left and... I don't, I'm, like, trying to say come to camera, but I know you can't see it. Okay, so, like, yeah, turn left. Keep turning left, like, yeah, uh, a little bit more. Come forward. My forward? Yeah, 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 yeah. just walk forward. Keep walking forward now. Turn slightly to your right. Okay, stop. Walk a little bit forward and more to your right. Okay, uh, now turn right towards facing you. Perfect. And then just walk like two steps forward. One more. Okay. All right. Now try turning around uh, 180. Okay. Now turn a little bit to your right. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Okay. Just like a little bit more. That exact same amount. Okay, that should be good. Trying to get the camera on my end. Your shield's went nuts there. I like it. Okay. Yeah, I took it. I took it off. Okay, now I want you to uh, try turning off your light for a second. Okay, now I can't see it. Uh, turn it back on. And then try to look slightly up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. Alright, I think we got some good stuff here. Now let's get out before those drones uh, start murdering us. <laughs> what do you get? I am curious. I I'm curious to see how, how this is going to be turning into some kind of spooky images, though. Quite, quite curious. I think, like, like the idea that I had was kind of like, even if, if they weren't, like, super spooky locations, if you have, like, the guy in the skeleton suit always in the background, then it kind of looks super spooky. And don't or you can just ear... take pictures of my, of my face, and that's scary enough. That's true. Bill's face is quite scary. Okay, so, um... I'm trying to see if maybe there's, like, a nearby station that we could go to... How about any Minerik? Oh, that's very low population. Okay, Peng, Peng Como. We're gonna take a slight detour there. I wanna find, like, an abandoned thing that we can try uh, Valor's um, uh, lighting tricks with SRV. Painting with light using your SRVs. And 07 Valor, indeed. What's wrong with that move? Is that just like... I thought this was like... My, uh... Discovery scanner or whatever, but... I don't know, I think that move just like looks like very crisscross. Like, I thought that was like... You know what I mean? Like, when you go into science mode? But it 
looks like that's the natural state of it. I don't know. Maybe something glitched out. Yeah, it's supposed to look like that. Unless that atmosphere is so thick. What is the atmosphere? 100% sulfur dioxide. Looking for a new TKL keyboard. Any suggestions? What's TKL mean? Like uh, I don't know. The keyboard lingo? Total keyboard ligamentation. Is that like mechanical keyboard? Alright, jumping up. Peng Como. I have a, a Corsair keyboard, and I really like it. It's pretty, it has like the shiny lights under the keys. The only problem I find is that the keys fall off a lot. <laughs> And so in the middle of a dogfight, when I'm panicking and slamming down the E key, and suddenly it falls off and lands beside the desk in between the crack of the wall, and I have to, like, you know, bend over and find my E key in the heat of the moment. Ten key less? What does ten key less mean? It has ten less keys than normal keyboards? It's missing ten keys? Or is it ten keyless? It's ten keyboards. But no keys at all. They're just like pads that you smack. Okay, Elwood Dock looks like a good little place to land. A smaller one without the run numpad. Okay, okay. So it is, it's missing the, the 10 keys of the num. I like the numpad personally. I'm a numpad fan. If you took away my numpad, I would feel naked and afraid. But Public Finance Commission, Stapledon Reach. You know, there's a there's a base called uh, Stapled Peacock Flesh in Elite. Missing the ten key cluster on the right of both keyboards. Yeah, the numpad, the numma numma, numma numma pad. Man, this place has a lot of settlements. Hopefully one of them will be um, abandoned. I don't know if there's an easy way to check. I do need to refuel anyway, so. Elmwood Dock would be a nice place to visit. Steel Series Apex 3 TKL, just 45 euros. That sounds reasonable. I want a keyboard made of teeth. I was Googling for some like weird, um, the weirdest keyboards ever and found like some really interesting ones. There's one that's literally like wrapped around a ball. Another one that's like split up into like 14 segments. I don't think any of them would be practical, but certainly uh, interesting. Uh, like me, my numpads. Yeah, I use my numpad too. Punt my numpad. That's where I, that's where I put my burgers when I'm eating on my keyboard. Actually, that would be an interesting product, is like a keyboard with a, a little food tray in it. You could pull out. You ever get like little food crumbs inside between the keys? It does happen to me. Yes. You're eating chips, and it's like, then you gotta like shake the keyboard upside down. But you can never get it all. So if they had like, you know, like at the bottom of some toasters, Ooh, maybe we can see about... This guy wanted, uh... What did he want? Dude wanted... Domestic appliances. Let's see if we can actually buy some here. Oh my god, they actually sell them here. Fine. I will buy you a domestic appliance. Does he now say, like, thank you? Do I have to give it to him? Like, how does that work? Accepted the mission. Do I have to buy another one? Are you happy now? Goods collected. Thank you, Commander. Now onward to my destination. Sweet. We did the thing. Of course, we're not taking it to his destination. We're going where we want to go. That said, I'm going to sell this geological equipment. I don't know where I got that. Gold and palladium. Which, by the way, that, that you there was a lot of gold and palladium at that uh, BGS ship. I don't know if it's enough to really make it a reasonable grinding location, but... Hey, I'm going to keep that exploration data. I'm not going to sell yet. Uh, what did I want to do here, though? I wanted to find um, 
an Odyssey mission, so I have to get out of my car. My car! Slash space, space car. Space car. And by the way, I do love the dolphin how it has a little fire extinguisher there, bolted to the wall on both sides. Or are they fire extinguishers? What does that say? Can I see those in camera mode? Oh no, I, I hit this part. Okay, all the way back. Okay, where would we be? So what I'm looking for is like an abandoned settlement. One that's hopefully on fire and all leaky and stuff. And then after this, we're gonna go to uh, the Jameson crash site. Which is more sad than creepy, to be honest, but, you know. It's sad and creepy. So what do I want to do? I want to look for like salvage machines, right? Or no, really what I want is like support missions, but they're not here. Okay, hold on. If I go to the galaxy map for this system, can I easily see what settlements might be abandoned? These are the Odyssey ones, okay. Like, they don't give a state. How do you tell if, if something is abandoned? Oh, I mean, like, Odyssey, I, I don't think you can see that, no. But uh, the best thing is just to take a mission, I think. Right, and those missions tend to be, like, very hard to find these days. They were very popular in the beginning, but I guess, like, because you... Like, I don't know, why, why do we never see support missions, ever? Uh, we, we don't? Well, I have an idea. Oh, no, wait, I was gonna say, I'm like, we could just make a settlement abandoned by murdering everyone, but that doesn't create the fires or anything, right? Mm. Oh. No. Okay. Well, hold on, I'm gonna head back to the ship. Let me see if I can check on, like, Inara or something. What do you typically use to, uh, search? Do you use EDDBI, Dabadai, Dabadai, Dio? I use Inara for most things. Alright, so I'm gonna do a little search of food, search nearest. And I guess what I'm looking for is, like, uh... Let's see here. Uh, would be some security level? No. I want to find... Do, do, do stations. Like, I guess, like... Okay, nearest restore missions. Interesting. Okay. And then what system are we in right now? We're in... HFTP. So yeah, Inara does have a pretty cool function where you can search nearest restore missions, and it says that apparently, in the Bodumba system, there is one. So let's try Bodumba. I love that That's name. probably like related to like states of factions, I guess. Yeah, it says that restore mission availability is not guaranteed, but more likely than, no, more likely there. Probably what it means is like, yeah, there is like, like an abandoned facility in that system, so like, that increases the odds of there actually being a mission to restore one. Well, it's worth a try. Bodumba is just one jump away. Oh, Bodumba. Actually, Bodumba would have been a great system for home base as well, like Bologna's. Can we expand here? We're actually not that far from uh, Bologna's right now. We're in Bologna. Okay, maybe we are. No, no, no. We're like... Oh! Jumping. Jumping time. We're like less than 100 light years from Bologna. Is. So, expansion here is a potential. Though, you know, from what I've learned is like, don't try to like, control where the expansion necessarily happens to that degree. 
Just go with the flow. When it comes to BGS, I think it's like there's a lot of uh, work that goes into it. We're a small crew. Uh-oh. Stuck in witch space. This in itself is kind of spooky. Has the, has the great Braben descended upon us and restricted us from playing in his universe? Permanently capturing us inside of which space? No, 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 he didn't. We're, we're fine. All right, let me go to Hershoff Legacy. Because again, it's like, how do you know uh, what even is or isn't um, abandoned, right? You gotta find those missions. Hershoff. At least it's not Hershoff's folly. Legacy sounds much cooler. Oh, we are already upon it. The station is so close. But yeah, the other thing too is, um, so so uh, at least Dakoso and I, we signed up for power play for Isling Duval just to get them prismatic shields. And I believe it's now been three weeks. So I think next stream, we'll probably start off by just doing like power play and demonstrating how terrible it is. Um, and then basically get our prismatic shields, I think the following week, or I'm not really sure when you then are able to get the rewards. Like if you have to rank up uh, and then wait for the next tick kind of thing. Yeah, you need to wait for the next uh, Thursday tick, yeah. Okay. So then we'll just do the legwork, do the, the stupid delivery missions, and then the following week, we'll be able to get our prismatics and then jump to the next faction. But I'm actually, like, at my storage capacity. I need to go through and do, like, um, inventory management, which Frontier does not really make easy. It's not uh, super easy to have to go through your outfitting. But I'll start throwing out, like, uh, I've got, like, a bunch of, like, AX weapons that are, like, not Guardian or whatever. I could probably delete. Because they have no engineering. Yeah, you gotta blaze your own inventory management. Pretty much. I wish they would increase that storage cap, though. I think it's like a little bit low. So I, I really do like to have uh, stuff in my carrier, so I can, you know, outfit ships without having to like store it on another ship and then like, okay, I want this power plant. I have to get my ass, store it, put something else on there to swap it out, then go back to the other ship. But that's a good idea, though, to have the fleet carrier actually increase the storage capacity. That would make sense. You would think. Right. Well, I think it's just like a hard, a hard limit on like how many modules you can have. Period. It is, but they should change it so that opening a fleet carrier increases the limit, the storage limits. That would be nice. I would like that. Another reason to to get a fleet carrier. I mean, I'm very glad I have a fleet carrier now. When I didn't have the money for it, I didn't care about it. But now that I have it, it's like I would be upset if I didn't have it. Okay, what am I looking for? No, I need to get out and go to the ground or... But hold on. Actually, I wanted to know if I could see... No. I wanted to know if I could see... What the heck those fire extinguishers are actually... Like, what does that say? Oh, it is fire extinguisher. Okay, so I was right. I was like, maybe it's like snacks for passengers. Press red button to feed passengers. And then you just feed them some liquid goop. Alrighty. Please be a repair and restore mission. Please, Zanara. Have guided me to the right place. Guide me, Braven. Alright, where is computers? I do really like the outpost layout a lot more than the um, the bigger station layouts. Yeah, me too. So much more spacey. Nope, no support missions. Damn it. What about like salvage? Usually those are crash sites, but every once in a while they might say from an abandoned no. Nothing here. 
I mean, hold on. Is there another... There is another system we could try. But I feel like this is like... Uh, it's like if it doesn't work on the next system, we just move on. So actually, is there anything creepy in here? Those big blue fans can be creepy. If only there weren't like two people standing in front of it. I wish you could like chase off these NPCs. I wish that also when you did the emojis, like you would change your facial expression <laughs> expressions. Is it all just like no matter what emotion you do, your face doesn't change? You want the thing to be in the dark, right, uh, or the daylight? Hmm? Do you want the, the the settlement to be in daylight or ideally not? in the dark? Yeah. Symbols on the computers, man. What about this other? This guy in itself, he's got a really creepy look to him. Just sway in there. Again, it's not really creepy. It looks cool and sci-fi, but like, is this creepy? Is this spooky? I don't know. Yeah, the creepy part of the game is usually the writing. You know, like Michael Brooks stuff. Oh, all the abandoned bases. Mm, yeah, but like the, the writing and the voice acting, not so much the physical location. Like the creepy locations and the creepy backstories, yeah, that's what, that's what really like sends the shivers down my spine, but... I wish there were more, like, I, I think, like, some of the derelict bases definitely look cool, right? Like, the abandoned bases, Dav's Hope, and et cetera, et cetera. There's that one, uh, the, the, the green mist places, right? Oh, true, true. Like, the, the barnacle? Think... No, there's, like, an, uh, an, an abandoned settlement in, in a green Targoid mist somewhere. Yeah, there's also that penal colony that's under attack by Thargoids that still the space runner should show up for. But I have no idea what the name of that place is or where it is. But I've been there once. Alright, so we're gonna try one more place, see if we can pick up a repair restore. Apparently Torno has it. Or at least they're next on the list. That, well, the list doesn't seem to be 100% accurate anyway, but... Or hold on, wait, 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 wait. There might be some... I can sort these by, like... Okay, how about Soaring Gosis? Because that one was updated eight minutes ago versus three days ago. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. The more... Wait, what, what, what happened? Tassong Goris. And boost! Now, I do love the fact that, like, I get this dolphin up to, like... 530 on boost, which is like just as fast as my FDL. Yeah, it is fast. But that's a huge, a huge win. Now, I did try specking out a dolphin for a Thargoid conflict. I think the problem with that is you only get two hard points, and they're both tiny. So, not really the best weapon or, uh, you know, anti Xeno ship. There are other properties of it which make you think, like, okay, like, based on the number of modules and, like, how small and tough this thing is, like, it, in theory, it could be a good Thargoid fighter. The problem is it just, it doesn't pack a punch. That's why it's like, I do hope at one point down the line they release a Dolphin variant that's more like the keelback was the Type 6, where it's got, like, a ship launch fighter. But it's just purely, purely a combat-based Dolphin. Let's try Engel City. I just wish there was a nice way to look from these, uh, even from the galaxy. There's a lot of fleet carriers here. What is going on? Is this like a, is there a convention going on? Like, why is everyone here? What's up with this place? 6.3 billion. Carpenter Dock. Gerst City. This is obviously a very, uh, oh, I've blown past my outpost. 
But obviously this is a very popular place. I don't know why. Never heard of it. Is there a, a player faction here, maybe? Interplanetary explorations. I don't think that's... Is that a player factor? Hmm, probably. There's a lot of them. But this is like some explorer player faction. It's like base of operation. That's kind of cool. It's pretty close to Bologna's. We should create a treaty with them. The Denga supports. Right, coming out of Angle City, hopefully we will find an abandoned settlement. But if not, we'll uh, head to Jameson. Figure there's Jameson, then there's the Bug Killer, which is a crash anaconda with a pretty cool story. And then there's um, a Thargoid base. I'll probably do um, a bio break somewhere in there. And then we head to the California Nebula. Let's see some space bug things. Which I don't know if they're there still next to McTurner Base or if you have to go uh, biome hunting for them, but. Space pumpkins used to only be in one place, now you can find them anywhere. Nemedes, or whatever they're called. Okay, coming into dock. Ouch. Ouchie. Oh, I think you're caught. This is fine. Uh, foot missions, so I have to get out. I wish there was a way to just get feet missions from the mission board in your ship. I mean, I guess that kind of takes away from the whole concourse thing, but sometimes when you're when you're grinding mission after mission, like just having to get out of your ship and walk there, or pick up new missions, they get a little tiring. Give these space legs legs a rest. Or even if there is a little computer inside the hangar. That'd be cool. I'm guessing they didn't want to change the UI so Horizons users and others users get the same, you know, oh, menus. That is, that is true. But uh, still a bit lazy, yeah. I wonder, uh, have, have, you know, since the console transfers have happened, I wonder how many console players actually transferred over to PC. And how many of them are in Odyssey now versus, like, uh, the Horizons one. Yeah, I've seen some Canon members who have transferred to PC now, yeah. I'm just kind of curious, like, like what the overall number would be. I don't know if I'll ever talk about that. Alright, mission board. No support missions. Damn you! It's all just like crash sites and wreckage. Yeah, well... If we can find one later, we can find one. If you guys know of any places that have them, then... Hey, great, but yeah, these missions are impossible to find. I think that is a glitch, or like unintended at least. It's fine. I'm gonna go scout out one of those Thargoid attack sites. Thargoid attack? What do you mean? The yeah, the settlements with the green mist. Oh, true. There's a list on on the wiki. I know uh, when we went to go look at the Thargoid system or whatever, there was one of them where a Thargoid actually showed up, and there was like green goop on the ground. I don't think it had like a green cloud on it though. Alright, we're going now to Jameson's, which is HIP 12099. Surprisingly very close to Bologna's. It's just a few jumps away, and this is, this is actually a place where there is some good uh, material gathering to be had at Jameson's, you know, um, final place of resting. Like, I hope they have moved the body and, and given a proper burial, because at this point, it's a routine uh, place that you need to go looting. And I could always use some materials. Would the Guardian sites be creepy? Uh, yeah, so, or so, well, so we're going to Jameson's uh, crash ship, then to a crash in a conda called Bug Killer, then to uh, the original, the first, very first active Thargoid structure that was discovered. And there's also apparently an anomalous signal, like a distress call, in that um, same system. 
Uh, then we'll have to take a carrier jump out to California Nebula to look at space pumpkins. And then, depending on how we're doing, like, for time, uh, that might be where we end today. But then I've got, like, Guardian Beacons and Guardian Sights, and there's um, an abandoned mega ship and a crash down Honda base all out there um, in the Snoopy, Snoopy zone. And brain trees. I'm actually not 100% sure when this, like, stellar screenshots competition ends. But I'll submit what I have here, and then, like, if I get more screenshots... I don't know, maybe I'll do a stream tomorrow. Although, I don't know if I can, because, like I said, I'm going to, uh, an abandoned theme park. Do some real-life, real-life, uh, spookiness. There's a place in uh, Florida that I saw too, where like a theme park or whatever, I think it was like a, a Six Flags Darien Lake kind of thing, um, got uh, reclaimed by the ocean. And there's like all these roller coasters just sticking out of the ocean off the shore. Super creepy. But I love that kind of stuff. It's like if you ever have an opportunity to visit like an abandoned subway station or, you know, like an old building that no one's in there, it's so cool. Well, maybe that's just for me. Alright, so when we get into the system, Jameson, I believe, is on 1B. And there will be a million free carriers there. Probably. It is true, the fleet carriers are now like a giant signpost saying, go here. Unless there's so many of them that every planet is crowded. But let's just see. Can we spot where it might be? Yeah, it's, it's definitely this one. Wherever the most fleet carriers are. Interesting, first footfall, Puke Dawson. That would have been a good first footfall one to try and get when Odyssey uh, came out. I guess like PC players have a little advantage over console players, you know, in terms of getting the uh, priority first footfall places. Alpha, um, like if, if you had first football in the alpha, did that transition over to the real game? I uh, don't think so, no. Right, I think like the alpha universe just disappeared and imploded on itself. Yeah, I think they wanted to give everyone the chance to, to get first football, not just the privileged alpha people. I know definitely that. The day I remember when Odyssey came out, I went and got first football on a bunch of like Guardian sites and Darkoid bases. Unfortunately, yeah, like some of the other locations that I really wanted to get, like someone must have been there the minute that that download finished. They must have already been there and just logged in. Clever bastards. There's always someone else in Elite. That's just the story of this galaxy. There's enough people in it. But there's always someone that's been playing longer than you and just is ten times more dedicated. It's those top one percent people you gotta watch out for. Now, of course, I'm sure everyone here knows the uh, the story of John Jameson. Though, really, like, do we really know the story? Or like, has it's been retconned? Like, I'm still not clear on the lore in terms of, like, John Jameson was asked to deliver this, this mycoid virus. He delivered it, and he got betrayed, right? But then, in the Elite First Encounters or whatever, you were, like, John Jameson Jr., and you had a choice to do it. So is this John Jameson Jr. or John Jameson? And did that get retcon? I'm assuming it did. I don't know. The, the lore is a mess in the game. <laughs> No one knows for sure. When you're trying to write the lore for an entire galaxy, I can understand it being a little, uh... Oh, there's a carrier called ah ha 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 Cocaine and Bounty Hunt. Kingslayer. There's the Jameson Crash Site. Unless that's the fleet carrier named Jameson Crash Site. Part to act Jameson Crash Site, which would be actually quite interesting. I like that prank. 
Uh, near a system with faction or infrastructure failure, Manal Crystal Engineering Facility. Oh, sweet. Okay. Thank you, Dark. I will check that out. What were you looking for uh, or looking on? Were you looking at on Inra? Or Inara or whatever? 185 light years? That's basically like what? That's three or four jumps for my dolphin. It's no big deal. You see a great need to rewrite the lore into the Dangarillion. Oh my god. Speaking of, I just watched the uh, the finale to the Lord of the Rings show. I'm like, I, I, I understand like not everyone's happy with that show, but I'm gonna, it's fine. I'm liking, I'm liking it better than The Hobbit. The finale was, uh, okay. Interesting. Though it definitely, there were some twists and turns there that uh, I both saw coming and, and like didn't think they were gonna go there and then they did it anyway and I was like, oh, okay. It was, it was interesting. It was it was better. I, I liked watching it. Oh, you use Spanch. Yeah, Spanch is the one that I know has been around forever, and I just, like, never end up using it. EDDB I do use, but I find it's, like, there's so many options on there. Inra used to be my favorite, but now they've kind of changed um, the interface, the UI. I'm a little more confused and disoriented. Like, where did that thing go that I liked? Oh, it's like tucked away in a sub menu or something. And we aren't open, so I'm kind of like on my, uh, a little bit of uh, on guard just in case some people show up. There we go. Let's try and get the lighting. Uh, let's see, what would be. Do we want to light it from the front or the back? I feel like the back is a little more interesting. This gives me that. Okay, like right about here would be nice. If I could just like actually land. And I'll land a little further back. That way the light's a little more diffuse. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna get my SRV for this. For two reasons. This one is uh, because I want materials, <laughs> but also because I want to try that light trick. Put some red light on this. Uh... Okay, where's that crystalline cluster? What is that? I guess it's just rock boobies. Shoot, shoot. Ooh, Molly Bendium. Okay. I was expecting, like, iron. I'll take it. Okay. And where are you, John Jameson? Oh my god, there's a lot of crystalline fag fragments. Germanium. Oh my god, okay. So, Jameson Memorial not only has some, like, nice materials you can collect. Crystalline clusters. Get your raw mats. Alright, as we approach the Cobra, keep our eyes peeled for anything that's lootable. Battle of Sterillium. Bio waste. Where's all the materials? Did they replace it with bio waste? What have you done, Frontier? Or maybe it's just this comms control. You're supposed to get data here. What does that give me? Goods collected. No, that's Titus. Discovered logs. Okay, well, there's uh, the John Jameson log. I'm not going to play it because, like, we've all heard about this one. Wait, that's three out of four. We're killing everybody. Hits PDP. Where are they all? Oh. 
that's right, there's like multiple it's people. Milk, mama. Um, I'm hungry. Well, I don't know, there used to be really good materials here. I'm not sure if, uh... Cobra Mark III, JJ386. Has anyone tried to decode that? Maybe that's a code? Chip analysis. Analysis complete. High constitution micro particles. Searching known database and identification. Results confirmed. Registered planet. Our, uh, pilot John Jem Might as well scan all the logs. Who knows? Maybe they added something new. I wish you got data with that. I don't seem to be getting any data. But all of uh, Commander Jameson's little sad logs. So let's try this. Um, with that, with that. Oh, that's just crumbs. I'll try pointing it this away. I'm going to take that bioways, by the way. This could be historical poop. We have here in this canister the poop of one John Jameson. Ladies and gentlemen, this man was responsible for the deaths of millions of Thargoids. And now we have the opportunity to smell his last meal firsthand. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I see that red glow. Red glow. I like it. I like it. How far does it go back? Not very far. So if I were to like crouch, maybe here. What is the spookiest pose? Is it up? Is it down? Is it staring straight at the camera? Is it standing and staring straight at the camera? I feel like that's pretty creepy. What if I'm like back here more? What if I stand on this canister? Is it spooky to stand on canisters? No, 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 no. Go forward, go forward, go forward. Now what's funny is that, yeah, if you do stand on one side of the canister, the other, it does roll. You can kind of barrel roll. Okay. Oops. It's a little hard to coordinate from camera mode. I'm just ca <laughs> just a killer casually barrel rolling down the street. I think that's kind of a creepy shot. With the red reflection, it kind of like... Could I get, like, red in both my eyes? Look like a Terminator kind of thing? That's creepy. What about standing on the cobra? Oop. Like right in the engine. I mean, look at that sense of scale though. Isn't that kind of crazy that the engine is that big that like I'm standing in it and it's still like twice as tall as me? shot with the guy looking up. That's kind of cool. And I'm thinking, like, what can I get in the foreground? Maybe one of these broken canisters? I wish you could, like, Stand in that little doorway. Don't think you can. I know, that music was super spooky. Yeah, Takosa sent me a bunch of horror tracks when I was working on the Event Horizon investigation. 
I have these in my playlist. They come on sometimes when we're doing fun things and it's like a weird Discord mix, but that was a very well timed. there I'm surprised there weren't more materials though I didn't even get any data like didn't this used to be like one of the top looting places am I missing something uh Jameson yeah oh, for, for data only uh, I didn't get any data though I'm scanning the logs yeah it gave me like the logs but I didn't get like uh, any cracked industrial firmware uh, it's weird. You shouldn't have gotten that. But I don't know. I know that you can get now cracked industrial firmware at Dav's Hope along with like all of the manufactured goods. The Dav's Hope I was doing like I did like two hours of uh, just looping around picking stuff up. It was actually quite quite uh, rewarding though. Uh, you got an idea? Get to neutrons and tangle them. Get on top of a whole new planet. Spooky action at a distance. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> you're talking about quantum entanglement. I see where you're going. Alright, hold on. I gotta go to the system that Dark Heavy mentioned. Munfail. Munfail. That sounds like a... It's like the, the KSP version of Moonfall. Munfail. Thankfully, that is only... Four jumps away in my delta. And let's see, yeah, because I think an abandoned base would be like really, like a lot of different opportunities within that base. And then we'll have a whole bunch of screenshots at the end of this to uh, throw over to Frontier. I definitely, I want to get to the Guardian sites, but I don't know if we're going to have time to get there. So I don't know. We'll see if I, get, if I do a stream tomorrow, it might be really early. I might even do it on Twitch. So I feel bad for like neglecting Twitch for like. streaming on Twitch in like a month. We shall see. I might have some time midday, but I would have to, to go uh, pretty early. Because, you know what? It's starting to get dark early, man. It's like I get out of work at like 6 o'clock and it's like the, sun, the sun's on, on, on the way down. I think that the darkest point is like December like mid-December there where it's like yeah like like five o'clock it's already pitch black outside but you know like I, I like the night I'm a creature of the night but the same token it just makes you feel like oh my god uh, it's nighttime already I can't imagine people that live in the arctic circle and do like the, the six months of midnight sun followed by six months of darkness What a life. Yeah, we get a lot of darkness here in Sweden as well as in, uh, as, as in Canada, for sure. But we usually spend the winters just in being inside and having candles and drinking hot liquids and, you know, making it cozy. That's oh. how we cope with the darkness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lute's saying, yeah, you're audience all European. Your early afternoon is just afternoon to us. Well, yes, that's true. But not also true. Like Valor, Valor's West Coast. He's on the opposite. He's like three hours behind me. So like, you know, everyone's all kind of over the place. But yeah, I mean, like, most of you guys in Europe, it is like, yeah, like as I'm like starting in my mid afternoon, you guys are like starting to to wind down for the night. I mean, it's crazy, man. You think about it, like you couldn't even talk to people on the other side of the globe a hundred years ago, right? Technology allows uh, us to uh, communicate with more people and send uh, more memes across borders, across time zones, across space quadrants. It's cool. Alright, so hopefully we'll find something in Munfail. 
Shinsolm Engineering Facility is what Dark Heavy says is the infrastructure failure. Okay, so that's like a state that's on the actual facility. It's called infrastructure failure. Okay. It's on the faction, I believe. Right. Faction owns the installation. Uh, and you say it's about 2,400. So let's scroll down to see what's here. And it's called Chisholm. the chisel there it is all right let's check it out what up eddie how you doing i'm trying to find an abandoned uh, facility right now and then we're gonna head to a third one base and we just being creepy today we're just taking creepy pictures as creepy as possible. Some of them are just cool, but like, you know, we'll have a bunch of them and at the end, uh, take a look at what we shot. Take a look at our camera roll. Do you remember back in the day before like digital cameras, you had to go to a place and like hand in the film and they would develop the film. Oh yeah, how is your new uh, box going? Eddie, Dark Heavy has a good point there. How's the new computer? Is it working out for you, Eddie? Is it fast? Is it agile? Does it groan and whine? I love sometimes when you start up a new computer and you just hear like the, the purr. I had to, when I got my new computer, my old computer was getting to the point where like it would start, like the cooling fan would start yelling at me. It'd be like a dong, 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 dong. I had to smack it around a little bit for it to stop uh, screaming at me. That's when I knew it was time for change. Why am I targeting a fleet carrier? Why is that like got a gray thing on it? To load up Elite, it's too fast. I can't look away and Elite Dangerous is loaded up. That's cool. Is it Dupahel? What is that? Refined Energy Scientific. Looks like there's a little facility out there. How many fleet carriers are in this system? Out of curiosity. Okay, only like four. Again, it's like these uh, abandoned facilities, man. Like they, I, I, I don't know why that they are so popular. Is it like the repair and restore missions are just really, really super easy, or do you get good benefit from them otherwise? But I guess they're so popular that um, every facility in the galaxy is practically up and running all the time. Chisholm actually is uh, uh, on the Day Night Terminator, which could actually be really cool. So I might get some neat looking skies. But still some long shadows that are creepy. And it's in like a mountainy area, so yeah. Sometimes in the mountainy areas, like the mountains could actually block the sun, make everything look really cool. And it runs really fast at Elite to the point that ultra setting doesn't seem to be a challenge. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, yeah, even on good rigs, when Odyssey first launched, it was chugging. Now it works pretty damn well. But obviously on your new system, you know, you're probably getting, like, seamless experience, which is great. There still can be moments where I think it, like, chugs even no matter what system you have. Popular because free power regulator. Okay, but I guess, like, that's... You only get the free power regulator if you take the mission and fail it, though. Right? And then just keep the power right there. But then in my mind, I'm like, okay, because you failed the mission, that place didn't get restored, so we should see a lot of those missions because no one's doing them, they're just taking them and failing them, right? But it's like, no, you just don't, don't see those missions that often. Okay, so we are kind of like in a lighty bit. You can see there's a lot of shadowy areas around uh, Chisel. As we get closer, we'll see the true, the true reveal. The truth will expose. Yeah, these facilities, they all look tiny from so far away, but actually when you get up and the detail starts coming in, you're like, okay. There's a lot to unpack here. Alright. So we want to get our SRV out. And then boot. Boot. 
And what's going to be important is we're going to use the SOV's lighting uh, to poke through walls. Create some ambiance. We're going to have to first figure out, like, where we want to do these shots. Like, is what is the creepiest building? Is it command? Is it industry? I feel like industry could be the creepiest. I'm just going to park here temporarily. I'm also not sure if there could be, like, bad people here. Gotta rebind all my bindings and you're up front on the stream. Oh yeah, when you uh, have a new computer and it's like, oh yeah, I have to rebind everything. Oh boy. So let's go in here. And of course, because the power is out, we're gonna have to open all these doors with our arc welder. Actually, I'm gonna overload it because I don't have access. And then can I just... How do you get power from the SRV? If I just click on this... No? I have to board it? Like yes. You can stand in the blue circle by your ship and you actually like repower yourself. Which is kind of cool. Alright, let's see what's creepy in here. I definitely love the look of abandoned uh, bases like this. But labs over there. Labs could be creepy. Is there loot? Oh my god, there's actually loot. Okay. Take all of the loot. Oh, actually, no. I only need really specific things at this point. Okay, what, what, what in here? Oh no, another panel. Just snap that open. Power it up. Let's see if we can power it up without shorting it. No, we need clearance. That's a little annoying, because, like, yeah, like, where do you get clearance? I guess, oh, maybe there's bodies, like, lying around on the street. That could be the case. Yeah, these labs, I don't know if I would call them, like, super creepy, but definitely, like, some good ambience in here. Someone's already looted this locker. Okay, so what is the creepiest part of this? Hold on, let me get this open. Yeah, labs can be creepy. I get so distracted by looting. It's like, before we do the important thing that we came here to do, I need to, like, pry open every canister. What's that? Oh, just glitching monitors. Alright, let's see if there is a creepy angle, first of all, in here. And, well, hold on. Where am I? Could I create, like, a sil- Could I create my own silhouette? I guess I would need to actually, like... Oh, you know what? You know what? I know how to do this. This is why we brought the SRE. Now, I wish there was a way I could put, like, a marker in there. I know I can, like, point to things. Like, if I were to point here... That creates a little uh, marker, but I don't think that that will stay very long. We'll see if I can get my SRV in time. Just so I know like what part of the building I need to point it at. It's kind of on that side. You really love the creepy music right now. Oh yeah. I mean, this is a... Uh, screw it. This is uh, Tecoso's fine, fine work. Okay, don't get caught up on the explosive barrel. Alright, so we're kind of like, the lab is sort of like there-ish. So if I were to point here, will that go through the wall? And when I disembark, will I disembark into the wall? 
Very good. Oh, I wish I'd open that door. Have to run all the way over here. Through here, up the stairs. There you go. So you can see, yeah, the SRV headlights do kind of come through the wall. I think the lab is like there, if I'm not mistaken. So we actually need to go further back. But this is working well. So I think the lab is that jetty outy part. Say here. Right here. Get out, and we're gonna work all the way back around. But I tell you, this is gonna be worth it because it's gonna give some nice ambiance, some lighting, and some shadows we can play with. Phil, are you still scouting out those green settlements or whatever? Yeah, I'll check two places out, but it's not really worth doing it. I'm pretty sure they nerfed it uh, with the Odyssey. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember uh, a thick I green mean, fog in, in Horizons, but it's no longer there. After a certain amount of time, the fog has got to, like, chill out, right? It's, not, it's not, Oh yeah, the Thargoids attacked this base six years ago, and there's still fog. Well, there were still Thor interceptors uh, there, so... Oh, they're still coming. Alright, so there you can see... The uh, light is coming through the wall. So now we've got some nice backlighting. So let's see if we can create like a cool shadow. So I want to be like, okay, which way am I facing? Use my own flashlight to guide me. So what if I turn off my flashlight? Okay. And just move backwards to the left. I want to make my shadow smaller, so I guess I have to go like closer. No, no, no. An open door. Like, it's kind of creepy with the motion, I just don't know if this is like... Or be creepy as a screenshot. What about from this side? It's kind of creepy. Do a gesture. Oh, good idea. <laughs> that kind of looked like a little sultry. What gesture? What gesture looks creepiest? That would just look like I pick my nose. Do I have the pumpkin head? I think I do. Do you think the pumpkin head would make my head like large and in charge? See if like there is also like a sort of sweet spot where when your head is tilted certain back your eyes kind of roll back in your heads.
That's kind of creepy. Like, there's this certain angle where it's like, you start to look kind of insane. Yeah! <laughs> uh, take out a gun. Oh, good idea. Hold on, let me give Eddie a wing invite. Okay, let me get that silhouette back. Big and bulky now, and headless in the way. What about a pistol? It does look like I've lost my head a little bit, right? stuck on my carrier in an FDL since last stream? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, my uh, carrier is back in Bologna's right now. Okay, let me go out and uh, let me try out the pumpkin head. You can also try moving from the lab to a different um, setting. Yeah, I think I got enough in the lab. Let's try something in the uh, command building, maybe. Up. I should be able to just get out, right? You don't need access to exit. Which is lovely. Whoop. Lost your head. Yeah, so no difference. No difference. <laughs> I've got permanent brain damage. Are Habs creepy? I don't know if Habs are creepy. I guess people sleep there. It's like nightmare fuel a little bit. Let me try something here. I want to go to the command center. I'm gonna try to angle my lights up. Like, sure. Oh wait, am I gonna be able to get out of the SRV if I'm angled up? I don't know. Don't think so. Don't think that will work. Let's try to get out. Alright, I gotta go inside and like find out what is creepy looking, and then we'll figure out where we want the uh, SRV to be. And by the way, are there just like corpses around here? Can I get access to the dead body? Any dead bodies here? Dead bodies and give me some access. No, I guess like at these places you really just have to uh, hack and slash your way inside. All right. La mer, Okay, this layout. Okay, so there might be two potentially creepy areas. Security. Damn it, come on. Let me try going here. Oh, you also have panel. Damn you. Security in the actual comms center could be potentially creepy in the right lighting. The security is probably going to be an easier one to light, just considering, like, it's on the ground level. Pumpkinhead copyright DHA. You can't copyright a pumpkin head so definitely like yeah this one has like escape criminal vibes so i think this could be creepy but so if, you, if you're around dark heavy come come you can beat the pumpkin head 
No, if I if I win the contest, I'm not splitting the winnings because I physically can't. You can't. How do you split a screen a skin? But you're all gonna take your own screenshots and, and beat me. I feel like, uh, like I wish there was just like a little bit more, um, I'm oh, sorry, a little bit less energy than that thing required to go off. What's in this cabinet? Oh, I thought those were suit schematics and I was gonna go nuts, but it's just like stuff I don't need. I don't need G meds. I need um, something in that category though. Health monitors, I think. Okay, so here's like the comms area, part one. But there's a bigger area usually on the other side. Here. Let me in. Okay. So I think, hold on, first of all. Okay, there is some light coming through from the SRV over here. Oh my god, this is actually kind of creepy. Like, I'm a little bit creeped out. There's, like, just enough light that you can see, like, the outlines of things. Hold on. I look scared in this shot, actually. When you turn the light out, it's like, yeah, you can't see what's over there. How do I put my helmet on? Is there a hotkey? Oh, whoa, whoa, what did I do? Oh, no, 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 that's grenade, 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 grenade! Oh my god, okay. Don't randomly mash buttons. <laughs> Okay, do I have on-foot controls for putting my helmet on? Uh, so many. Reload, switch weapon, holster weapon, toggle night vision. How do I toggle my helmet? By the way, why am I taking my helmet off in an abandoned base that has no power? Like, how does that work? I guess there's no, like, like, I guess night vision would do that if I had night vision. But there's no, like, hit J to, like, you know, take your helmet off kind of thing. Her. When do you plan on jumping my carrier? Um, so after this, I'll probably skip the, um, the bug killer, to be honest, for the interest of time. And just go straight to the Thargoid site. And then we'll do a little bit of stuff there. And then I'm going to do a bio break while I'm planning to jump the carrier. The carrier is actually, if you want to go, like, join up with it, because that'll be where we are shortly after. It'll be in this system. After we've uh, finished here, that's where we'll be heading. Ooh, that's kind of creepy. It's just spilling on your face. It's kind of hard, man, to come up with like... An... Oh, you're already on my carrier, but stranded. <laughs> Oops. Whoa, 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 what was that? Was the light like coming back on? What was going on there? Also, why is there like padded walls that those monitors are attached to? The thing is though, I was hoping for more like bustedness here, like more fire or like brimstone. Just generally like a little bit more like uh, chaos, but it actually seems to be very clean. Unfortunately. 
It's like all the best, like, you know, anytime you try to do something specifically in Elite, like, oh yeah, I want to find, like, SRV destroyed. Wait, what? Why? Why are there so many dots on the radar? Oh my god, I think they're coming. I've angered something. What is going on? My ship's under attack. Okay, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here! Oh no, what is going on? Oh my god, now I'm actually like really creeped out. I only have one energy pack. Better take a health kit. Fill it while I can. Are these troops that they're coming in or the Thargoids coming? What is going on? I'm like seeing dots, but like, there's no one. Oh god, oh god. I'm actually scared. Is there gonna be someone there? Where are they? Who killed my SRV? You, you son of a bitch. Get over here. Die! Are they up on the roof? Winfred Evans, you sons of bitch. You know what? I'm killing you all. You can't hide behind that wall. Apparently you can't. Okay, fine, you can't. Oh my god, there's a lot of them. Oh my god. Okay, okay, just, 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 if you could all just actually cluster, oh my god, there's a lot of you. If you could all just cluster there, that would be great. That's the way we like it. I can't believe they destroyed my SRV, sons of guns. I needed that, I need that for lighting. Oh god, oh god, don't let them shoot you. So the sniper you gotta worry about. So this is the problem too with the uh whatchamacallit suit. Okay, actually health is getting low. No! No! I'm telling you, man, this pivot all over and it ain't us! Scavengers. Halloweenies. Okay, I was not prepared to take on such a large force of people. There were a lot of them though, like, oh my god, that was not scavengers, they were organized. Actually, I'm thinking I might do, um, like, I feel like that was what I needed, but it wasn't really what I wanted. Like, I wanted, like, the, thank you for the F. I wanted the damn, like, fire and stuff, so I don't think I'm going to go back down there. I think it's time to go to the next place, which is Thargoidy. Of course, I will, uh, rendezvous with the Dangabus when I'm there, so let me just... Put that there. And how many jumps is that? Nine jumps, not so bad. Contract cancelled! Oh yeah, I guess, I guess, oh, dude blew up. I forgot about that. Or wait, 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 hold on, is he still on my ship? Hold on, let's get Eddie another team invite. I can't, Eddie, you're in solo. You gotta come out of solo. So this contract failed, but like, you can safely discard this mission. So I think, did he eject? The destruction of your ship has made it impossible. My ship did not get destroyed. It was my SRV. So you're wrong. Cut, uh, I'm writing a, I'm gonna write a one star review about that man. Yeah, we, 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 for those of you who might have just joined later, we were just hauling around. We took a passenger mission from someone, and we're just like, yeah, we're not we're not going to take you to where you want to go. We're going to take you where I want to take you, which is all the spooky places. Thanks for the F, Valor, and Dark Heavy, and Loot. Yeah, that was, um, that was a lot of Fs. 
Yeah, if you want to wait at the bar, sure. Um, although, if you want, um, in this system, HIP 909, I'm going to head to planet 1 and then 2A. At 1 is apparently a quote-unquote anomalous signal. Um, I don't know if that's still there. That used to be like a, a ship that got, you know, hurt by the Thargoids. And then 2A is where the actual Thargoid base is. And if you want to meet me at the Thargoid structure, then uh, you should be able to get there. When we're at the Thargoid structure, what I'll do is I'll start the carrier jump um, after we've got the screenshots. Like as we head to the carrier and then take a bio break while it jumps. And that'll bring us to the California Nebula. And I think that's all we're going to have time for because I've already been streaming for three hours. It'll take about an hour to get out there and like, you know, check out my home base, check out a little bit of other stuff. Thanks for the F, Eddie. <laughs> Uh, and then, like, yeah, like, I definitely think in the California Nebula, there are a couple cool, uh, um, local sites. And then we'll save Guardians for maybe, um, either tomorrow if I can swing it, uh, or potentially next week. Because next week all I have planned is just, like, that stupid power play stuff, which I don't really want to do. But you have to. So that's power play. Makes you do things that are not fun. To gain weapons that give you an insane advantage over other people. Why that is a thing, I have no idea. Feels like it might be a weird oversight. And look at that! Fuel scooping and my dolphin doesn't get up above 51%. Like, this is actually beautiful. Uh, so, okay, so Eddie, in planet, in the HIP, the system that you should be in if you're on my carrier, uh, planet one has, like, a, a signal source or something in space, anomalous signal. Um, go check that out if you want. And then 2A, I believe, is where the Thargoid structure will be. So if you want to check out the signal, um, like, I should be there in a few jumps anyway. Phil, where have you got off to? Um, just in, what, fail. Just... fail? Yeah, just doing, doing nothing. Listening to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Were you down there yeah, I'm not sure gonna... when the bad people came and shot me in the face? No, I'm just by the star. Uh, I'm gonna call it quite soon. I'm very tired and I'm working tomorrow morning as well, so after the bio break I will not be here. All good. You will take a permanent bio break. At least for the day. Basically, yeah. Well, I still appreciate you being here. I like the, the first photos that we took too, with you being all scared in the front with the skeleton man in the back. I think we've got a cool, yeah. a couple couple good ones. I don't know if there's anything though, like, again, like some of the stuff that Tacosa was posting in that channel, I was like, damn, these are good screenshots. I really want the ambience of fire. I feel like, okay, so if it's not um, just a case where the place has to be shut down, does it have to be like a war? Maybe if there's a war going on, I just don't sign up to a, either faction. There'll be some cool, creepy buildings there. I, I have faith in the, in the Guardian stuff. I think the, the blue light is going to be uh, creepy. Yeah. I, that's why I kind of wanted to save it to the end. Uh, Guardian stuff and then, like, uh, a derelict megaship. Brain trees. All in the same system, too. But I think that'll be the next stream. Either way, we'll have, uh, we'll have all the screenshots published on the gal feed, on the gal tube. But yeah, the creepiness of the game is usually from the the writing and the audio design. That's Not true. so much the visuals. It's a tricky question to find a creepy location. Uh, visually creepy. I mean, did you hear about the four Stargoids and coming? It's five now, Eddie. It's five. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's been, like, the big overarching plot right now. Um, certainly I don't think anything is going to happen with them until about November. And I think whatever they are, wherever they are intended to go, they will arrive. I know, like, Canon might be tracking them right now to see where they are, what system they're heading to next. Uh, I'm definitely using the next couple weeks to just, like, you know, get my engineering done get my uh get some new ships in the arsenal and do fun stuff because once the thargoid the stargoids arrive it's gonna get messy i think i think we're gonna have a lot of uh content come from that 
Either that, or they will stretch it out over the next three months. They'll be like, oh yeah, the Stargoids have now stopped. And there's something else coming. Soon. In three months. <laughs> I do hope that yeah, there's they, a big... Yeah, they do big take too long. Thing. The what? They, they, do, they do take too long to wind these story events up. Yeah, I think I mean like like uh, I like a slow burn, but like a storyline that spans over a year, it's really hard to keep engaged with it, especially when it's like the pacing is like maybe like a month at a time, or sometimes like every two months they add to that sort of storyline, and then there's like a different storyline in between there, something about like oh no, the crops are on fire in Beta Hydri Six because of a lightning storm. We need people to deliver medicine for crops. It's like, well, what about that? What about that cool NMLA storyline? We'll get back to that. Five Stargoids. Are the Stargoids coming to save us from the Guardians? Uh, I doubt that. I think they're angry because of the Proteus wave. I think whatever Salvation did, it, it's uh, the consequences of that we're gonna see. And yeah, five Stargoids, I don't think your crate can handle that, but I don't think anyone expects you loot to, like, stand alone against the five Stargoids all by yourself. If you need a wingmate, let me know. I'll find something for you. Because I'll be in Colonia. <laughs> no, man, I'm, I'm stoked to see what happened. Like, again, is it going to be Thargoid ground combat? Are we just going to get new Thargoid fighter variants, maybe that, that are not invincible, like the Hydra? I don't know. I hope it's good. I'm also stuck at Wish Base again. I blame Eddie. Eddie, this is your fault. Okay, I'm free. Thank you, Eddie, for releasing me from the, uh, my prison. I mean, look, I would definitely fight star five Stargoids at once if the opportunity presented itself. I just, I wouldn't expect to win. I can barely fight, like, I can kill a Cyclops, no problem. A Basilisk, I think those ones are actually a pretty steep jump, because they're really quick. Um, I don't think I've killed one solo. I think I have fought and killed a Medusa. And I think there's one more above that before Hydra. I can't remember the name of it. Do you know, Phil? What, what, is there, like, something between Medusa, Basilisk, and Hydra? Can't remember. But the Hydras, yeah, those are honestly, like, I don't understand how people do it. You kind of need to have the, the laser modification that makes your ship fold so that it can't target you. And if you don't have that, it's, like, really, honestly, like, you, you can't fight it. Why me? Because I needed someone to play. I needed a scapegoat, and I decided to make you my scapegoat. Oh, by the way, are you still in solo, or can I send you a wing invite? There you are. We can invite husband set. Solo, everything but a Hydra. I mean, when you do it in groups, it certainly is a lot easier, but like, you know, it's like you gotta measure your combat skills on your own, right? And it's like, yeah, like, Cyclopses, I've got the hang of it now. I can definitely take on a Cyclops. If I had to take on two Cyclopses, I don't know. Probably would die. But I'd maybe be able to kill one and, and wound the other one. Uh, or at least hurt its feelings really bad. Okay. And I need to go to... Okay, so there is an anomalous signal. Okay, tell you what. Let me go to the anomalous signal first. Because I don't need an SRV for that. That is space-based. Then go to the dang of us. Get my SRV back. Yeah, but it's no fun. What, fighting a Thargoid solo? solo? I think it, it can be fun if you put on the right music. Like, if you put on some real, you know, combat driving music or, like, 80s synth, and then you just kind of, like, get into this rhythm. Like, it can be fun. Like, in terms of, like, you're really... You have to be focused, right? James Nearly Jones? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm dying. James Nearly Jones. I love it. The solo, everything but myself. Are you saying you could fight anything solo but yourself? 
Like you can't fight yourself solo? I mean, technically you could. If I've engineered a Viper to go faster than the missiles it shoots. So I can literally outrun my own missiles and kill myself. So yes, there is a black box here. Apparently I think there used to be something else. I don't know, I'll pick up this black box, see if there's anything good on it. And yeah, this could be a cool place for a photo. It would be cool if sometimes if you picked up these black boxes, um, you would get like a message of like what was on the black box, even if it was like procedurally generated. Is this creepy? I don't know if this is creepy. It's a good photograph, but... Your cargo bay, you your fly is open, sir. Like again, I'm not sure if this is creepy or just like cool, but I mean cool screenshots are also cool. a little bit of a chill. Creepy-ish. Alright, time to head to the Dangabus. Just do a quick restock, then we head down to the Thargoid site. Just gonna obey this mass lock. Man, this dolphin is fast and I love its squeal. It's actually a little unsettling, but uh, I guess that's the point. Yeah, it's it's lively. It does sound like a, like a bucket of mice being beaten. I wish you could replace the sound files in this game with your own custom sounds. Just literally, like, replace the dolphins who sound with, please stop! Now that would be creepy. That would be creepy. Have you seen, um, uh, what's the movie where they're on the frozen train? Captain America is on it. Uh, Snowpiercer. Have you seen Snowpiercer? Mm. You haven't seen it? Nope. Okay, I don't want to spoil it then, but there's something in the ending which is like unsettling and weird and bizarre. It's actually, I, I would recommend it uh, if you haven't seen it. It's a really fun movie. Like, the basic plot is like the world has gone into another ice age and there's like all of humanity is now aboard this one train that this guy, Ed Harris, um, built. And the train goes all over the world because the world is frozen so like for some reason they're able to build tracks everywhere and the train never stops right so it just like constantly goes around the world i'm assuming maybe you know it's like going with the rotation of the earth to stay out of the uh, uh the darkness where it's too cold i don't know but it's the idea of a frozen train or a frozen world and there's a train that goes around the world and all of humanity is on this train and then like the class system is in place where like people in the very back of the train are basically slave laborers for first class 
And the idea is that there's a basically a rebellion in the people from the back of the train trying to fight their way to the front of the train. That's a crazy idea. It's a crazy idea, and then like the filmmaking is a little batshit insane. Like there, there's like an axe fight, and uh, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but like it, it, it's also got what's his name, the guy who plays Captain America, Chris Evans, uh, is like the lead character, kind of leading the rebellion. And you know what? I, I walked in that movie going like, this sounds like really bizarre and offbeat and whatever, and it was, and that was amazing. Uh, it really satisfied me. I haven't seen a single Marvel movie. You haven't seen any of the Marvel movies? No, I don't like superhero movies. Yeah, if you don't like superhero movies, I don't think there's many Marvel movies that I would say would be uh, good ones. Uh, indeed. But like, uh, Chris Evans as an actor is pretty good. I liked him in uh, Knives Out. That was another one that uh, hmm, Daniel, yeah. Daniel Craig, you saw that one? Yeah, I have that movie on DVD actually, yeah, I've seen it. Love that movie. Chris Evans was uh, entertaining in that one. Yeah, I'm not sure who he is. I'm not getting a face. He was the the he was the bad guy in, in the twist and knives out. Hmm. Yeah. Basically, the one the one uh, I love. Oh man, that movie's great. I think there's a sequel to that movie. Is it out? I don't know. But Craig does a good job in it. Uh, the first one. Oh yeah, I loved it. I was like, oh, yeah, give this man more um, outside of James Bond work, some character stuff, because he was great in that. I didn't know he could do that accent. I don't think I he's got, he's got like a like, he's like a like a like a southern accent or, or Texas. Yeah, he did. I like that the idea of like the gentleman detective that like, you know, he he doesn't even know who hired him. He just got a letter with money, and he's like on the case. <laughs> Great plot. Yeah, I don't know about this. I feel like the second one's probably not gonna. I'm not gonna like it as much, but I think we we have a sore lacking need. We need more detectives. More detective stories. They like, can't. Sherlock Holmes is uh, you know, he needs more more other detectives to work with. The, the genre is quite popular here, at least when it comes to the books. Was Daniel Craig also in the, um, what was that remake of, I think they were Swedish films. Uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Uh, he's in Cowboys and Aliens. Well, that, that is correct, him and Harrison Ford. <laughs> I love Cowboys and Aliens, and I think that's a hugely underrated movie that I wish, like, like, I think it's like, it's an 8 out of 10 movie, but a really good 8 out of 10. The, the problem is the title, or well, the twist is the title, because the title is good and bad. I love the title, but I can understand people would think, oh, that's stupid, that sounds stupid. It, it's really a cool mean, title, but it's it makes it you think it's like a beat movie, and it's not a bad movie at all, Like, but the title makes you think it might be. Yeah, I get that. Okay, I think I got an SRV now. Let me just check. Good, good. Okay. SRV restocked. Let's do this. Unknown structure. Scan. That's where we want to go. Eddie, Eddie, come along. Come, come in your FDL. <laughs> Give those Thargoids a talking to if you need to. So we'll get some uh, uh, lovely, magnificent landing from your angle. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm known for my um, impressive landings. Oh, landing gear. Shit. Like, why am I going so slow? The screams of the dolphin. Alright, let me just uh, let me pop some scans on this planet. Let's probe it up. I'm not sure if that unknown structure scan is like a beacon or the actual structure. I guess that's where we're going. Whatever, we'll just go there. 
I actually should have brought. I should have brought some uh, stuff to get inside. <coughs> Ooh, actually. Mm. I mean, I think the outside is creepy. Oh, I need to go inside. I actually have to go back to the dang bus. So I forgot. I need to bring. Um, Thargoid, what is what you call it? I was thinking for a second that you could find them outside on the ground, but no. You ain't got no probes? Well, neither do I, apparently. That's why I have to go back. <laughs> Forgot my probes on the day of the bus. I only have one probe, though. I'm not bringing a probe. I'm just bringing, uh... Like, I'm not gonna make it angry. Although, hold on. Yeah, you need the probe for the map room. To make it angry, that's quite easy. I just bring something guardian. Three guardian things. Okay, I can do that. Gear down. Let's see if we can pull off this straight. Landing. Very good. Very close. <laughs> okay, we might need a little repairs after that one. Okay, so inventory. Okay, I can probably transfer all of this to my character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what I need is not a sensor. Or yes, a sensor, but not a stolen one. Give me one sensor to open doors. I think we tested... We can't put bog spaniels inside of a guardian site. Do we like three orbs? Those are all my orbs, but sure. I'll be going to guardian sites next stream anyway, so... My shields came out? Well, they, yeah, they, did, they certainly died, but, you know, it's, uh, it's fine. That's what, shield, that's what shields are for. They're there to take a punch for you. <laughs> Alright, heading back to the unknown structure scan. Blue Nanube. There's quite a lot of carriers here. Oops, I'm going too fast. It's actually so close, it, 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 it's rocking my mind. Okay, I think I might be going too fast. I feel like I'm going to slam into the atmosphere. Good. Yeah, sometimes, honestly, it's like getting down to planets, like finding that right speed where you don't just smack in the atmosphere and uh, lose all your shit. It can be difficult. Turn on my lights. Alright, here we go. It's nice and in the dark, too. That'll be good for the ambiance. Very good creepy creepiness. Wait, is there someone down there? Hold on. Oh, that's just light reflect reflecting. I thought there was like a ship parked over there. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Right now, there's like probably a lot of Thargoid um, science to be done if you think about it. Because for the first time, like uh, the Proteus wave, or what do you, what do you call it? Um, the Proteus wave was triggered, and now the Thargoid sites actually produce a commodity. That is called, um, what are they called? Unclassified relics? So when you yep. put, like, what is it, three guardian relics into the Thargoid Mabob, it will spit out something new, and it never used to do that. So there's probably more things that it does that we just don't know about. Maybe we'll find out today. Yeah, there's been uh, quite a lot of science done on that. No, no, not, not, nothing revealed. I think we're just waiting for Ramta and Palin to make a gal net about it or something. What are you saying, uh, Ray? Check the system check message? 
Oh, it's just the messages. I don't see anything in the channel here. But I guess yeah, sometimes you can see other uh, players chat to each other in the system. Alrighty. Alright, so let's try to get a creepy screenshot of the door. I think these doors are always cool places to be creepy. Spider webs up there. Hey! Hey! <laughs> I saw that. I saw that, Eddie. <laughs> Shooting a rocket at me. Kind of creepy, but again, it's like, how do you? F what 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 defines the creepy aesthetics, right? Like, we can't do any actual body horror mutilation to ourselves in this game. It's not. Uh, not allowed because of the rating systems or whatever. That egg? <laughs> you and your rockets. I feel like, um, usually people that are, like, looking directly at you from a distance, that tends to be, like, uh, a little bit creepy, a little bit, un uh, like, like, concerning or whatever. That's kind of creepy. Like definitely like low shots that you kind of that are kind of looking up and megalithic structures. That could be also very creepy. That's good. You're right. I'm gonna have to get my SRV and get the uh, thingy to open the door. The Scarab now can hold four objects, which is actually quite awesome. I'm glad they made that change. Rockets look like fireworks. You know what looks even more like fireworks? You gotta look for, um, what are they called? Uh, uh, the flat cannons? And then there were some engineered ones that had like different colors. That was part of the winking cat thing. I don't know if that's still like in-game, if you can even like go get it at this point. If it is, uh, I would highly recommend it. I want all of this lovely stuff. Alright, Eddie, I'm gonna open the door. I'll wait for you to uh, get in. Just don't rocket me, SRV. I don't know why, but my shields keep going down. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, damn it. It's, uh, this one's caved in. I have to go to a different entrance. Yeah, you gotta follow me. You can't go in here. I'll hold the door open. Hold the door. Hold the door. There is no door here. But yeah, Thargoid sites, like, definitely, I think, like, unsettling, right? Like, the, the imagery of all these, like, spikes pointing up in the sky, like, it's, it's definitely alien. This door goes down to the juicy center. It does. Alright, so we'll wait for Eddie to mosey on over. Let's see if there's anything. Yeah, that could be creepy. Like, I find, yeah, like, like things look scary at a distance for some reason. Hallways with nothing in them can also be quite scary. Like, if you think about it, like, if you went to, like, a place where, like, there was literally no one in there. Eddie, you coming? I don't know where you are. I see our ships. Where you be, Eddie? Oh, I think you're right behind me. 
given the sound of explosions. There you are. Don't shoot me with a rocket. I'll run you over so quickly. <laughs> Don't piss off the scavengers, not yet. Not yet. Okay, you are across the threshold. You're kidding. Okay, so let's find... Yeah, I'll turn night vision off so we can get the proper ambulance. I think leaving my SRV like here for a second might be cool. Go a little bit further in. Don't look at me, scavengers. Yeah, I think like a light in the distance and just like a figure can, can look very cool. Coming towards me, Eddie. So we're getting like a cool little effect that actually like almost like duplicates me. Probably like standing right about here. Get that, get that effect right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. That is a very interesting effect. What happens if I move? Oh wow, this is cool. Yeah, okay, very cool effect. Like that is actually a really neat visual effect, and I wonder like how they, how they go about doing that, right? Like, there's little, like, like, heat waves, but they seem to, like, replicate whatever image. Double. Where'd you go, Eddie? I wonder if there's any kind of hidden signal if you, like, hold this wave over a Guardian Relic. Problem is jumping, I look like I'm like trying not to also crop my pants. <laughs> ah! I also have a rocket launcher, Eddie. Just letting you know. start to take place. Right about here. Eddie. I'm not wearing shields. That's really cool. Could take a bunch of these. I wish you could zoom in even more. <laughs> I see you squatting. Who knows what these, uh, what these effects do? I love that. Okay, that's cool. What happened? Okay. What would happen if I stand on this? And then, like, Eddie, you just shoot it. 
But try and time it. Eddie, go ahead and shoot that pod. I'll try and like take a photo where it just explodes. Shoot the pod, Eddie. Shoot the pod. Pop the pimple, Eddie. Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready, go. Ready. Oh no! <laughs> I wasn't expecting a rocket. <laughs> oh my god, I'm almost dead. Oh my god. That was funny though. <laughs> Get to, get to the pod, the oh. Okay, let's go to the main room. Let's move our lighting machine slash uh, holder of all things sacred. I do want to shove some orbs in those. Oh, 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 Eddie, don't let me run over you. The SRV is a death machine to those on foot. Well, there is an uplink device. Can I just scan that? Do I get like Thargoid treats? Thargoid residue data. Sweet. Mmm, sticky. Well, I know that this thing also, um, these little wobbly wobblies, balls of fun, they will also distort images in a cool way. So I wonder if I were to, yeah, put my lights on it. Eddie! Don't piss off the scavengers. They will destroy us. If I were to stand in here... It's kind of a cool shot. Yeah, I want to almost like be in the center of it. Look at me, I'm a fish, I'm a fish. Look at me, I'm in a snow globe. Oh no. So like <laughs> What's going on there? Eddie, careful with that. Don't run me over. Like, this is not creepy. I think the, the distortion can be creepy. I want to see if I can get, like... What if I'm, like, right here? How do I get distortion? That's kind of cool. Oh god, oh god. I see headlights. Oh god, yeah, there he is. <laughs> I knew you were creeping up on me. What's that effect? Like, I don't know. This is cool. It looks like fog. Creepy? So, oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, Eddie, turn those lights on. That looks cool. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Eddie. <laughs> Don't make me have to blow you up. Yeah, it's like weird because like you can look up when you're jumping up, but then not when you're jumping down. Or when you're, I guess, coming back down or whatever. far away shots be again not really creepy just like more like sci-fi all right eddie do you want to actually um if you're in the srv oh <laughs> do you want to poop the guardian orbs into the three sockets and let's see what happens Pop those orbs in. This is kind of creepy. Like, again, it's like sci-fi creepy. It's not necessarily like horror-ish. Horror-ish. Young Watt and his peg lag. Bring me the Haradra cube so I may put things in the box and then jam it up my firm buttocks and turn the items into new treasures like poo poo it's <laughs> Eddie are you uh you doing okay there buddy you know what you need to do yo Ed Ed, come here. Let me point at the uh, hole. You gotta sit above this thing and then just jettison the orb. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, and then let me stand here. Maybe that will be creepy. Man, I'm like, I don't, how the hell does Tokoso get these crazy cool shots that I'm like, I haven't even been able to get close to that level of, uh, awesome. Alright, Eddie, jettison the orb. Let's see what it looks like. this new computer it can't like uh, defeat uh, Odyssey can still defeat anything right Cannot go in holes. 
Or was I just like not in the right uh, enough spot? Like if you are, where is it? Yeah, right about here, it should be good. Interesting. So I guess maybe orbs do not fit in the in the thermite sites. Or hold on, let me try a different um, module. Let's try from here. Oh no, 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 not the thermite sites, right? That's weird. Maybe that's just like something that can't go in. I know the relics can. I've seen like urns go in. Huh. Alright, well I think I've got some good screenies from the Thunder Grace. Probably could do more, but I feel like that's good for me. Oh, the basement. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Gotta do something with the basement. Black adder as usual, eh? Wait, where's my SRV? I just got out of my SRV. Where is it? Y'all just saw that, right? Where did my SRV go? It had stuff in it. It had the. I, how do I get out? Am I stuck in here now? Okay, let me just do basement shot. That's really upsetting, actually, because I would lose a third grade thing in three orbs for nothing. It just disappeared. Also, I'm floating. This is. This is. This is actually kind of creepy, though. Again, it's kind of got that, like, monolithic, um, you know, like a small man against three large, what look like Thargoid bathrooms, to be honest. Yeah, I like this shot, actually. It's very epic. I'm pissed off about my SRB, though. Please let it be out there. Is there any way this could be creepy from this side as well? That does look kind of creepy. Turn around and walk back towards the camera. Wait, what? Like from the other side? Like, like, like from shooting from this side? What up to CD Productions, by the way? I do like a low angle here too. So like turn around this way and start walking this way. That means you're stranded in the structure. No, no, no. Why does Elite do this? It just deleted my SRV from existence. Why is it mad at me? I feel like this is a little bit off-center, hold on. If it's for a photograph, you wanna just like take that time to make it make it all good, right? Oh that's kinda cool. Yeah yeah yeah. Green chop, green chop, green chop, green chops. You found my SRV? Wait, what? Where the hell did you find it, Eddie? Did it pop out of the building? Yo, can you bring it back inside? <laughs> really? You found my SRV outside? Oh my god. Okay, what about like getting all up in here? Do you remember when you couldn't leave your ship and you couldn't like be weird like this? There's like a skeleton man up in the rafters. That is kind of creepy.
Like these things are like also they look like they're dripping boogers, you know? Have you ever like looked at these closely? Wait, is that a symbol? I think it's the ace of spades. This is a, maybe this is a third grade poker table. Like I don't know if this is super creepy, but it does look cool. It's on top of the building. What? Yeah, I know. You drop in right at, uh, right, at the, right as the SRV is disappearing from existence. And apparently just leapt through the roof. The SRV got so scared it decided to bail and literally just jump out of the building. Yeah, I guess I've got it on my radar. Yeah, okay. So it's somewhere there. Oh, wow. wow, wow. I didn't know there was a hole up there. I don't think I can quite reach it. I do not have the jetpack fuel. Could this be an angle? Is this creepy? I mean, I do think that is creepy. Like, the idea of, like, a hole that looks like a burrow in the ceiling. I would be very, uh, uncomfortable walking underneath this thing. It's got some sort of, like... Kind of a cool angle up here, actually. Yeah, I wish, like, you didn't look static when you were jumping. You can't burn... Oh, I need to send you a wing in, by the way. Okay. Oh, you sent me one. Gracias. Okay. Activating their system authority. What? Alright. Um, I think it's time... I think we got some good stuff in here. I'm definitely happy with, like, overall... Uh, like, we've got some really cool screenshots. Will they win the competition? I don't know, man. There's some really talented photographers out there. I haven't been playing too much with things like depth of field. Actually, let's, let's do a little experiment. Like, I could be playing around a little bit more with the fine-tuning. For example, let's do this. myself out of existence and have the background on me. What the hell? You, 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 son of a bitch. Stop pushing me around, you bully. Okay, so what if I'm like right up against the wall here? Like, depth of field uh, can add some really cool like, sort of depth in the picture or whatever. It's something I don't play around with enough, I think. Sorry, you've exceeded your depth of field. Wait, what do you mean? Oh shoot, Eddie, what do you mean the door won't open? Wait, do you does, check the inventory? Does it still have the Thargoid thingy? Am I legit stuck in here? What do you what do you call like the the fuel rats if you run out of fuel? What do you call if you just need like an alien thing to open a door? Why can't I do depth of field anymore? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, 
I somehow broke it. Apparently. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is probably how Tokos is getting a lot of his really cool shots, eh? Using the, uh, the focus. Makes a big difference. Like, who is that man? He's just a bunch of polygons, really. It's like such a th thin little sliver of focus, I love it. Looks like night traffic sort of thing. This is actually kind of cool. So it has everything but the door isn't opening. So... Basically, Braben has decided to do me to an eternity. Very cool, though. I really do need to play with the depth of focus more. What do you mean the door is locked, Eddie? Okay, hold on. Let me come over. I got, I got a rocket launcher. Nothing is locked. Nothing is locked for those who have the right tools. Eddie, are you in the right door? Because there is that one door with, like, the collapsed bullshit or whatever. Like, if that's what you mean by locked, then yes, that door is locked. I suppose... Okay, here's my next question, is could you take the SRV to my ship and dock it with my ship, even though I don't believe the Dolphin has multi-crew? Actually, what That's would... That's right. Like, what would happen? It'll just say can't board. Oop, sticky keys. He tried all the doors. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do we do? Oh, hold on. I can just walk up and it opens. <laughs> okay, apparently no big deal. Apparently I can literally just walk up to the door and say open sesame and it's fine. You're one of the meta alloys. Let's try another depth of field shot from the outside. So I really like this effect. Certainly, all these shots have been like creepy per se, but certainly interesting. Again, you know, I find like, you know, when you talk about horror and creepiness, um, often the human imagination is going to do better than whatever the heck, uh, you know, you can come up with in real life, right? So it's like having things blurry or obscured or in the darkness uh, can certainly like add to that ambience, right? That looks really cool. Was that you flickering the headlights, or was that just the alien uh, uh, circuit mess wrappers? That's actually really cool with the depth of field. Oh my god, I love it. They drive towards me. Oh my god, there's something creepy about you reversing like from that spot. <laughs> hey, don't run me over. I 
I think that one might look cooler because of the motion, though. Hold on, I gotta mess up the... No, no, no! Eddie! <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> I know you probably didn't mean to do that, but... I mean, come on. <laughs> you ran me over! <laughs> Oh my god, that took so long to die. You have lost consciousness, just like I do every night. Alright, I am going to start my fleet carrier jump. We're going to head up to the fleet carrier. <laughs> You're like, oh crap. See if you can take the SRV on your ship, or at least, like, save those items. Because those items are uh, hard to gather. Thankfully, the Dagobus is very close. Uh, while I am moving to it, though... I'm going to try to get as close to California, because where I wanted to end this stream uh, was basically in the pumpkin patch, which is very festive. Forgot to engage backwards. <laughs> so we can't quite get all the way there, but we can get uh, relatively close to this carrier, make it a matter of a couple jumps. Yeah, that works for me. And then we'll just do a little bit of exploring the California Nebula. But first, uh, we're going to do a bio break as soon as we land. And then I believe, Phil, you, you said you were going to launch off in the bio break because you got to sleep. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for being here and keeping us all entertained. You are welcome. Don't start the jump your miles away from my ship. Uh, the jump has started, but you have 15 minutes to catch up, so literally, like, like it takes 15 minutes to spool up. Well, I think, technically speaking, you have about 10 minutes, because there's a lockdown period, right? I don't want to get you stranded in here. You're miles away from your ship. That, you, should, you should have enough time to get up to the Danga bus. It's literally in orbit. You'll be okay. If not, I can pick you up. You gotta make it, man. You gotta make it. You can do it. We're bus talking. And then boost towards that landing pattern. Get me in. I think I'll go up to the, uh, the carrier office for this job. Let's see, did I? Nope, nope, that was not, that was not perfect. I mean, it worked. One step at a time, tiny bits of progress every day. Refuel, repair. Strangely enough, yeah, it's like, now I have a new SRV, but if Eddie's still in my old SRV, is that like some sort of like Schrodinger's cat? Are they quantumly entangled? Let me run up to my office, then I'll put up the throw up the bio break thing so you guys can steal each other's kidneys. And then we've just got one last little uh, group of uh, destinations to get this stellar screenshot. And then I'll probably do a, just like a recap of all the things that we did. And I'll post that in the Discord. I'll post it on, like, I don't know, should I do like an imager of it? An imager? I'll definitely uh, uh, post, like, uh, the best of each screenshot from each, like, zone or area. Some will be, I think, more creepy than others. Some will just be potentially, you know, looking kind of cool. Right now I'm just looking at a black screen, so I don't know uh, if I've angered you, David Braben. Please, let me know. Let's hash it out. Let's talk it out. Let's drink a cup of tea together. Eat some cheese. Eat some... Eat some, uh... Force tanny pathogenics. Uh -oh. It does this from time to time. I think I might have to menu log. So weird. Yeah, those glitches, I feel like, uh, it's just like when you transition from Odyssey into whatever. Where's Dove Enigma? Is he in the chat? Why don't I see his message? Oh, hey, Dove Enigma. For some reason, I was on like top chat instead of live chat, and I didn't see you. Um, I didn't see you there, but hello and welcome. 
You've joined us right before a bio break. Excellent timing. I'll leave the mic on and you can hear all the splash goodness. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, we are doing some creepy screenshots today. Ah! 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 There's a skeleton on my ship. What up, Glitterbeard? I wasn't expecting you there. That's actually like, that creeped me out. Legit, legit, um, shock value. You want to do a creepy shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's go here. This is creepy. Again, I don't know if it's creepy or cool. I wish there was, like, also a slitting the throat kind of, uh, shot that you could do. How do we get this that looks creepy? Can, uh, Glitterbeard, can you turn around and face the camera if you can hear this? Oh wait, okay, okay I can work with that. <laughs> it's creepy that there's a man squatted next to me. Let's try that depth of field. I mean, it looks cool. I don't know if it's like creepy. I'll go the other way around. See, I feel like yeah, you can't really do it. The, it doesn't really work the other way around. Like if I wanted to blur him and have BB in focus, like it just it just don't work that way. This is not how it works. Oh yeah, I gotta get uh, Eddie's team invite. I will shoot you also. You creepy skeleton, man. That honestly, like, like shocked me. I was like, what the hell? There's a yellow skeleton man on my bridge. Oh, that could be an interesting one. It's just like, yeah, I'm standing there looking out at my bridge. And there's this, like, creepy little yellow skeleton. Alright, I'm gonna do a bio break, because I really need to do one. I've, it's PP time. But, uh, I'll be back in five minutes. Enjoy stealing each other's kidneys, and see you shortly. Thank you.
back. I'm back. Oh my god. Oh, Valor, thank you. <laughs> the whole seven, sir. D no, DH, just no. DH has been very quiet, which means he's probably working on some taking some kidneys. Actually, yeah, all right. That was good. Where'd you go? I'll follow you. I wish you could see, like, the reflection in people's, like, pupils. Is this creepy? Is this guy creepy? I mean, you kind of can. I can see a reflection of something. Can I see Ray Mobula, though? In his eyes. I've never really, like, spent a lot of time just, like, close up on an eyeball. It's a little creepy, to be honest. What about from this side? Inside his face. What is that? That's creepy. <laughs> oh, is my bio break banner still up? Oops. Hold on. Let me get rid of that. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, Ray, can you go and stand in front of that guard again? And I'll get like a shot from like in his eye. Where do you buzz buy the skeleton suit? Um, I don't know if it's still available. It was definitely like a Halloween thing that they did. Um, but like, I would assume it's maybe if you're gonna find it anywhere, it's gonna be in the, uh, in the shop, right? Ooh. That's really gross. Floating eyeball. Oh god. Like, they really went ham on the eyeball textures, eh? This is actually the creepiest thing ever. Oh no! I got a scooter to my seat. Dang it! Wait, where am I? Oh, I'm still in camera mode. Okay, I can still potentially get some eyeball shots. Floating eyeball. Ugh. <laughs> That's so gross. It's slimy. All right. I wonder. Can I get inside my own eye, my own head? Eddie, did you make it back on board? I don't see you sitting in a chair. Please don't tell me you're stranded. Yeah, there seems to be some sort of blocker. Like, there's clipping on yourself, right? But these NPCs, they're basically... They're basically hollow. Because they're hollow me's. Hollow me, hollow you. Excuse me, ma'am. I just need to go inside your face for a moment. Can you st st stop moving... Oh, maybe when they're seated, uh, they become more permanent. Ma'am, this isn't going to hurt. I'm just going to go inside of your noggin. Okay, apparently it does not want to let me go inside of sitting people. Can I get through that mask? No, you just disappear. It's weird how the other characters, like, you get close and then they just disappear. Maybe I can capture that transition, it looks like a ghost. I'm sure one of those I got one. After the jump? Yeah, we can try it after the jump. I want to get like a shot, yeah, like from within someone's eyeball. Looking out. Eddie, by the way, did you get on the, on the thingy? Oh, and Eddie, don't worry about running over me. That was funny. I was fake mad. It's more its more comedic if, if there's a reaction. Caution. Caution. Diamond square with colors. That's creepy. Actually, this whole game is creepy. I'm hoping that Eddie is sitting in his ship on the fleet carrier. And he 
didn't get stuck because you can't dock anymore. Whoa! I got out. Yeah, for just that moment right before the carrier jumps, your camera can actually flip through walls. It's uh, quite incredible. Here we go. Beautiful carrier jump. I wish you could still be in camera mode during this jump, but I understand why you can't, because it is basically a glorified loading screen. But I would love if you could, like, get outside the carrier and actually get a shot of the carrier going through the hyperspace tunnel. Comes the lightning. I'm so happy that they put this view in, though. Because, like, when Carriers first came out, it's like, oh, wow, the, the jump is going to look so cool. Oh, you have to do, you have to sit in the hangar and just wait for it to finish. It was, like, a little bit, like, aw. But, yeah. This is, this is cool. There you go. All right, it looks like Eddie might be in the same system. So what I'm thinking is like, yeah, like stand in front of this guy. Wait, what? You're different. Where'd the other guy go? Oh well. No matter, as long as I can get inside your face. Let's get right up in the eye. It's actually really hard to like finesse this. Your head is like smaller or something now. And also, you're like swaying. Okay, I'm in their mouth. there was like a real fine tuning to this game but it's just you kind of have to just live with what you got it's kind of creepy all right where's Ray Mobula going I'm sorry commander uh glitter beard rather Secondary crew changes after a jump. I didn't know that. So it always refreshes. I guess they're not always standing in the same place. So the people that were on break before, I guess they uh, rotate. It's time to put D shift on. All right. Well, let's uh, let's head to the last location. And then maybe what I'll do is um, I might do a stream. I'll try and do a stream tomorrow. No promises, but um, I'll try. And then we'll go maybe start at the California Nebula. Head over to the Guardian Guardian Town and check out some more creepy sites. Cause I do want to win this paint job, man. I think it's a, I think it's cool that Frontier is doing competitions and you know they do the stellar screenshots pretty regularly, but it's I think always the same prize. So it's nice to have something like different, right? When it comes to exclusive skins, man, I've got a few of them. I've got the Labecon skin, uh, like the special effect decal. Like, kind of a few of these, um, cool little skins. Alright, so we're heading to HIP 1077. And within there, 6C is the planet we want to go to, which is this one. I don't know if it shows up as a facility. Oh my god, it does. My own research base. It's actually got a... Oh yeah, because you, you got docking pads and everything there. Megadocious. Alright, here we are in the California Nebula. Odd, you were standing at the same spot. We probably de instance because I don't know, like, like, carriers also re instance people through the jumps. It's weird. So you and Ray were in the same instance. I see. After stream, can I head to Heidi's sector? Uh, is that close? 
I can jump, uh, I can jump there. Cause yeah, I guess you are stranded out here. You're now at the mercy of my carrier. Yeah, I can, I can set a jump. I'm getting hangry though. I need, I need food in my belly. So one more location. Cause it's been a long stream. It's uh, four hours. So I, I still have more sites that I was planning to visit, but I feel a little bit tired today. I went to two concerts this week. I saw Iron Maiden on Tuesday, and that was phenomenal. And then Captured by Robots on, uh, on Thursday, which was the, the honestly the greatest show I've ever seen. The man, like it started out, they bring a coffin out, so like a bunch of pallbearers bring the coffin to the stage. He props it up. There's a like fake corpse in it. Knocks over the coffin, steps on top of it, and starts singing. And then, like, at one point, he literally, like, took a fetus out of the corpse, started swinging it around by the umbilical cord, and he was done with the song, put the fetus back into the dead body. Like, just gimmicks like that. And obviously, like, you know, he's got robots. It's a one-man show with robot band members. Um, very punk rock, very avant-garde. And I've just like I can I can safely say like I've not seen another show like it. I hear Gwar has shows like that have the same level of theatrics, blood spraying, and everything into the crowd. Although um, the singer for Gwar died, there is like a new singer, but I don't think it's like I don't think it's quite the same. But man, I love seeing bands that are just you know not only about great music, but also they put on a show. Um, there's a band I saw. This is a few years ago, before the pandemic. Um, it's called Oakley Dopely. And these guys are, again, they're a very hardcore band, uh, writing some really heavy rock music. But it's a Ned Flanders-themed outfit. Uh, I think they're on hiatus right now, but... Yeah, every song is about Simpsons or Ned Flanders lore. They come out all dressed as Ned Flanders. It's like, hi, I'm... Um, I, I'm, I'm Ben Ed, and this is this is Ed Head, and this is Ned Head, or whatever. Like, we all have Ned Flanders names and, and um, uh, costumes. And literally, like, even the roadies were dressed up as nuclear power plant workers with little green glowing um, nuggets of uranium in stuck in the back of their suits. Like, really, really fun band. It's like, them and Captured by Robots, I think, were two bands where I laughed as much as I had banged. Where it was just, like, an incredible show. Yeah, yeah, I, I, well, I'm gonna go to my home research base, start taking more photos, so we got plenty of time to get there. Check out Amigo the Devil and Peter Raphael. I'll check them out, man. I, I, I am into, like, performance art bands, where it's not just about the music, it's about the stage show. And Iron Maiden, I think, is the pinnacle of that. They're giant set pieces, they're pyrotechnics, flamethrowers, you know, it's just like, you're like, holy crap, this is next level rock and roll. There's one um, that I'm thinking about checking out. The guy named Mark Rebier is actually coming to Toronto in a couple weekends. Or it might be next weekend. I don't know. Time, time is really flying. Um, and he does, like, improv loop music. Uh, usually does his shows, like, dressed in a little house coat or whatever, too. But um, he's an interesting character. And it's just like, the, you know, now that uh, we can go see concerts again, man, I am just, like, stoked to go to whatever concerts I can. It really sucked uh, for musicians over the pandemic because their main source of income basically dried up. So now it's like, yeah, I'm trying to go to as many concerts as possible to make up for that. I've never heard of Amigo the, De Amigo the Devil or Peter uh, Rafui, but I'll check them out. And I'm just doing a scan here because I do want to double check and see what I'm looking for essentially are, okay, so Bark Mounds, but what I want is actually not bark miles. I want um, anemone, anemone, ammonies, anemone, anemone, anemones. How the hell do you say that? Now it looks like they are in a vast area. Of course, Odyssey did change the way that um, like flora and fauna generates, right? Like if you go into Horizons, all flora and fauna were limited to like POIs. So you would find like a little patch of brain trees right at a signal source. Now there's like areas where brain trees might grow and you have to kind of just, you know, find their biome and sort of manually search for them. 
which is a little bit of a change from what it was before. But it, it makes the, you know, the wider surface of the planet. Like, there are a lot more places you can land to find cool stuff. Now, this is good. We're on the night side, so there'll be nice ambiance. Yeah, the Great Mahon Research Base. There's a lot of mysteries that um, come from this particular place. If you have not watched the three-part Elite Dega series, The Case of the California Conspiracy, I still think it's one of my favorite episodes of all time. Because literally, we just like met up with a bunch of people that lived at the California Nebula. We're investigating it. We met Commander Krako, who's the guy who actually uh, first discovered the Space Pumpkins. And it was just, uh, you know, a really fun, wacky episode. Or at least trilogy. It still holds a special place in my heart. So here we are dropping at Mahon Base. Now, before Odyssey, Mahon Base had like a bark mound patch. Just kind of off to this side. I remember because the round building was like close to it. I don't know if that's still the case, though. I think in an Odyssey world now, you just find bark mounds where you, where you find them. So let's see if we can find some anemones, aka space pumpkins. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, that's why I brought shields. Space pumpkins, where are you? Where you be? Not seeing any. It's possible too, like there might be a radius around bases where they're less likely to spawn. I don't know if that's true though. Because I have seen like uh, grass and stuff near bases. Okay, we just boost along the ground. Eventually we'll find some. If you go far enough in the same direction, eventually you're going to come across one or you're going to find yourself on the other end of the planet. But the ladder takes a long time. What's going on with the squares on the ground there? Okay. This could be like the transition zone of like the base perimeter. I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's dark. Oh, it's very dark. Maybe we have to get off this checkerboard. Start seeing space pumpkins. In theory, I could switch back to horizons. But I don't want to do that. Show me space pumpkins or show me death. I do find it actually really fun to just try to fly as low to the ground as you possibly can. There's something going on with the ground here. Like, these textures are. Are those space pumpkins or are those rocks? They're rocks, they're rocks, they're rocks. That's fine, hit a ramp. Yeah, the frustrating part about, um, the, like, I wish they had kind of gotten the best of both worlds and left the POIs in on top of, like, having the biomes do it. Because now, like, yeah, you are trying to find a specific plant and it's, sometimes it's like, a little bit like takes a while. If you see any pumpkins, holla. You've wandered into Tron Legacy, right? Yeah, I know, huh? Or it's like the holodeck on Star Trek or something. Seeing lots of rocks, but not many space pumpkins. I mean, I assume, like, it was a pretty big biome where they were allowed to appear. But my theory is that a lot of these plants, too, um, like, elevation might matter to them. It's 
So like some you tend to find in like mountainous ranges or high up in the mountains. Some of them you find in the valleys. Or like canyons and stuff. I don't know, maybe this is like... Should I just try the landing? And see if maybe getting out of my ship... Like it looks like there might be some terrain generation issues. I'm certainly not seeing like much of anything. No bark mounds, no grass, no anemoninos. Okay, let's just try landing and see what happens when I get out. Am I gonna fall to the planet's surface? Oh, there got my shields. That's fine. Actually, hold on. Put the pips to shields. Let's just get out and see what happens. What if they aren't visible on night vision? Ooh, good point. Are they stealth pumpkins? Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't have night vision in my suit. And also, I don't, I'm not wearing my exploration suit. I need to put on my exploration suit. It has the doohickey that I need. Uh, this one. Valor's unsolicited opinion is regroup at a Terminator so you get some low light. Not a bad idea, actually. That is pretty good. I'm gonna do that. Let me just do one little sweep. I'm curious, maybe by landing and getting out of the ship, it like resets something in the Braven brain. The Braven frame. They uploaded the Braven brain into the Braven frame. I like fly flying low in Dengus. Hold on, wait, here's a crater. It's looking crater. It's fine. Maybe Space Pumpkin's like low elevation. Let's try turning on the ship lights as well. Because, like, these Space Pumpkins, I've seen them before, they're pretty big. They're like twice as tall as the commander, like. It should be pretty obvious. But I think you're right, Valor. It's like, maybe, maybe the proximity to Mahon is also, like, doing something here to the doohickeys. What a beautiful nebula, though. Very pretty. Uh, put away hard points. I don't have any hard points! Identified signal source, like on a planet. Or no, it's in space. Degraded emissions. Okay, let's take Valor's tip and try to go towards the Terminator. I mean, I think things are creepy at um, dawn and dusk. Like, there is kind of like like having some light that you can just see the outline of things can be creepier than seeing nothing at all. Let's head towards light source. Was that Eddie there? Or was that um, someone Eddie was targeting? I think he's behind me. Okay, where is light? That's the star, right? Actually, it's a good question, because like, I know Elite like um, can't handle like multiple lighting sources or whatever. It's so like, whatever the, the A star is, like, that's the only lighting source. Even if something is, like, orbiting another star and should have, like, both sides lit, it just picks one light source to the other. I think if they tried to do otherwise, it would probably crash everyone's computers. I feel like I should be seeing something in terms of light now. 
Let's also just make sure that we're looking at the right biomes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got Terminator Zone. And we have a nice big sea of blue. So let's try somewhere here. That looks good. Now go by the crater. So you can kind of see like, like like the areas that are a little bit elevated and mountainy, those are areas where the anemones do not like. So I think elevation is 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 important. They might be low-lying um, space pumpkins. Let's see what we find. Here we go. It's still pretty dark. Turn on our night vision. Boost, little dolphin, boost! What's that signpost up ahead? It is the Twilight Zone. This is cool though. I like this, uh, man. Like, look at that. Look at that star. That's cool. Right, let's start in the crater. Yeah, not seeing any space pumpkins. Try going low and slow. Just in case they have a pop in time or something. Hmm. Hold on, there's one. There we go, we found it! Space pumpkin! Isn't it pretty? Unfortunately, we're too low to get that star, but... Okay, we found one. There's probably some up outside the crater, too. But let's uh, get some screenshots here. <coughs> You're getting tired? Oh, I feel you, idea. It's like, what time is it for you, eh? Well, if you get tired, just head to the Danga bus. I promise I'll get you... Uh... I won't, I won't strain a man, I won't leave a man behind. Welcome to Space Pumpkin. And these are actually scannable now, which is interesting. What's that sound? Eddie, <laughs> I see your rocket trails. Eddie, don't shoot the space pumpkin. You don't know what it'll what it'll do in response. or not might be subject to debate but like what defines creepy how, right how do we uh how do we define creepy that looks creepy i'm telling you it's like people standing away from the camera oh let's send ray a wing invite there you go invite sent but like people, yeah, people standing away from the camera and like just staring straight at it. For some reason that always strikes me as creepy. I feel like this area needs a little something. This is sort of creepy though. Some shadow on there. Some light in the background. Can I get my own shadow? Kind of there. Yeah, okay. 
again, like just a little bit more framing if I get that nebula in there. Sure. Oh, this is so Halloween y. Give me pumpkin pie! I want the delicious pumpkin juice. And look at that little French tickler on top. Here, Eddie, do you want to look up? They put your weapon away and then look up. Rotate yourself, rotate yourself. I'm trying to find like a nice centered squared angle. Let me try to do that. That looks cool. There we go. That's cool. Well shit, ran out of tinder. You get when you get to the end of the tinder and then you're like, oh boy. All those ads that tell me there are, are um, hot single mums in my area, they've lied to me. Alright, let's find another space pumpkin. Um, I want to see if I can find that, a nice view of that like star in the background. I think a lot of people got discouraged with Tinder and then left Tinder. There are like other um, platforms now, but it's like Tinder is just like so basic or whatever. So this will test that theory if, like, do pumpkins only appear in craters, or can we find them outside this crater as well? Where is the star? I'm gonna head in the direction of the star. Now keep an eye out for space pumpkins. When the moon hits your eye like a space pumpkin pie. That's an anemone. Oops. Excuse me, rock person. Ooh, that would be so cool to get a shot of a space pumpkin with that in the background. Ooh. Come on, space pumpkins. too fast and they can't uh, spawn quickly enough. That looks to be okay. I mean, I guess it's the same species, but it's like, sir, I think you might you might be uh, your space pumpkin. There's something wrong with your space pumpkin, sir. It's not really that pumpkin space. Who's that? Is that Eddie or Ray? Is it the same species? My scanner will tell me. It is. This is a poor man's pumpkin, really. This is like when you go to the grocery store last minute to get a, a jack-o'-lantern, and all the good pumpkins are gone, and this is all you're left with. It's like, oh shit. I should've gone, I should've gone sooner. Is that Pisces Cobble? Yeah, you're a Pisces Cobble. No one likes you. I'm gonna kick you, kick your, kick your rock. Oh God. Eddie and those rockets. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just like it's a little too low to be able to 
Unless I get like a really wide. Ooh, that could, could be cool. It's a cool shot anyway. I'd shoot that pumpkin again really already. Give it another hit. Blow that pumpkin to smithereens. Turn it into a pumpkin spicy latte. Alright, some nice action shots. A little bit of danger. Alright, we gotta find one more pumpkin so I can get that scan. Ew, ew, ew. I liked it better when it had the weird tickler. Alright, we gotta find one more pumpkin. We'll keep heading towards the star. Maybe we'll be able to see something cool. But that's interesting. I didn't know the pumpkins had like such drastically different shapes. But that one was certainly not bulbous like a pumpkin. Okay, so let me try like going slower. And maybe that's that's my problem, is I've just been like whizzing past. Okay, this could be no, that's a geyser? Fumarole? I'll scan you anyway. This, excuse me. Searching for the space pumpkins. Yeah, it's like when I slow down, all of a sudden things start. Oop, 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 oop. Did I crash into an invisible pumpkin? Ah! <laughs> Close, close. Oh wait, hold on, what's that? Oh, it's a, um, it's a, what do you call it? A flaming boy. It's magma. Give me the, the magma sprout. Heart boiling magma. Okay, let's kind of go a little bit slower. Fly information here. Oh wait, that's the space pumpkin, but it's currently like a dopey one. I want like a nice big thick pump pumpkin. I wonder if like that is like the, the, the factor where like depending on the elevation of the pumpkin, that determines its plumpness. It is certainly not a pumpkin. Well still dim you. I'm gonna scan this just to get the the thingy. Oh, landing gear, right, right, right. I'm like, why can't I land? I just want to complete the geologicals. But I want to find, like, a nice pumpkin that looks like an actual pumpkin. Not one that's, like, that looks like a, you know, sort of like a... How many people in your village cut a pumpkin? It's a deep south pumpkin. Lutolium, Lutololium anemone. They named a pumpkin after you, Lute. Lute's probably already passed out in disgust and pain. Ah! Alright, we gotta find, a, like, a good pumpkin. Fruit rolls could be, or the, um, the megmas could be cool, interesting things to also try screenshots in here. But that would be interesting if, like, yeah, if, like, the pumpkin plumpness depended on the angle of the dangle, like, what, um, you know, like, the deeper into the into the, the ground you go, the deeper the crevasse, the plumper the pumpkin. I'm gonna go slow, because it seems like if I go too fast, I can't see these things. If I go nice and slow, the pumpkins will present themselves. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, we got a plump one here. Okay, so that rules out my uh, elevation thing, theory. Oh, that's a nice spicy pumpkin. It doesn't have the weird tentacles on top. Okay, I'm gonna deploy my SRV. Well, thank you, Valor. I will endeavor to keep it up. 
That is the goal. That is the plan. And today was like, you know, a nice little bit of like just checking out the sights around the galaxy. Like, you know, I was trying to focus on different things and have some variety. And I think it's kind of cool to be like, yeah, let's let's uh, like do photography this time because we did. Um, well, last time was like rage and murder because <laughs> we were test flighting uh, the um, infamous uh, FDL. Is that a spicy pumpkin? I hope so. A pumpkin spiced latte. Yeah, look at that. That's a beaut. Ah! Oh yeah. This is a good pumpkin. Now, how do I make it look creepy? Number one, can I get that star in the background or do I, will I have to be like super high? Yeah, I have to be like super high. This is a cool enough screenshot. Maybe not creepy, but very cool. It actually created a little cool cloud around it. Also, like, giganticism can be, like, creepy, right? Like, when something is just clearly large, that can be triggering for some people. I don't know if any of these are, like, award-winning Pulitzer-winning... Um, type of uh, photos, but uh, they'll be good one, Good additions to my screenshot bank. Oh my god, there's going to be so many screenshots though. Okay, slow down the camera. Oh god, he's pointing a gun at me. I do look tilted in this. Like, for some reason, I'm like off center from the pumpkin. That's a cool screenshot. I don't, again, I'm not sure if it's creepy. Mushrooms on the ground. Who shot the fungi? That's cool. And let me try again from above. Sometimes just the angles that you don't normally see can also be like a little bit creepy to the brain, right? Because it's like, how often are you in this perspective, right? So it just looks off-putting, right? And I think that's what like what a creepy thing should do, is make you feel off-putting. Yeah, we can see, right? I mean, I'm liking these screenshots even though they're not creepy. It's very Halloween-y. It's kind of like uh, Exorcist. I wonder what those photos might look like. Who shot the fun guy? It wasn't me, it wasn't me. I think probably Eddie's Rockets probably did that. Uh, but hold on, let me see if I can uh, do like a screen share here, one second. So I, th I think I want to go back and show you all of the photos that we've done. Just minimize a bunch of crap here. Okay, so, hold on, where do we start? There, okay. Okay, let me set up a little thingy here. So screenies, delete that. Remove. Yeah, yeah. Uh, display capture, I think. Okay, can you see this now? I think you can. There we go. All my massive screenshots from today. 
So let's try to take a look at a few. So we started off with, I think, a pretty cool... Uh, like, this is pretty cool. This is kind of like, you know, a guy hiding from a killer that's stalking him, right? So the, there's uh, Phil Barnes. A few different shots. I like that last bit where it's like, yeah. Did, 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 did. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then we've got... Kind of looks like there's a little bit of a red eye there. It's just like a neat, neat coloring. Uh, this was cool. This was from um, what was it like Ir Irvisani, a place called like Inferno Center or whatever, and just like really cool, uh, strange imagery, right? And going through these tunnels, I think I would say, like just the the tunnel itself looks creepy. This is inside the tunnel. I don't think that turned out as creepy as the other ones. That was flying out of the tunnel. Like, even that just kind of disturbs me a little bit. There's something disturbing about that configuration. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's me being, uh, looking bored. This was at the, um, the crashed B BGSH ship. Can you actually read a ship name there? I don't think you can. But yeah, that was not really that creepy, but... Hey, you gotta get a selfie. This is kind of a cool shot. Again, not sure if creepy, but certainly cool. Uh, oh yeah, this is at the ground facility with Phil, where he set off the alarm and has got the skivers attacking him. Look at this, I'm doing like a slideshow of my vacation, like grandma with the, with the slide deck, right? Now get the overhead projector, Daniel! Uh, pipes, pipes are looking creepy. Again, the sense of scale, I think that, that that megalo, like that just like that sense of scale is a little bit creepy. One guy waiting here, one guy up there. I don't know if that's like creepy, but that one you can see. Again, I don't know if your eye draws up to that area, so maybe that's not the effect that I intended. Um, this is a cool shot. I think there's a good ambience here under the pipes. Like rows and rows of industrial piping. I don't know what it is, but it kind of creeps me out. That's kind of a cool one. Guy looking down. I think that's a better, um, that, that's like more in line with, with the effect I wanted to get from the other shots where the guy's on top of the door looking down. This one's a little clearer. Your eye kind of draws there because of the light. That was with no light. It's a little hard to see Phil on the ground. There's Phil being shot by a sentry skimmer. That's kind of a cool shot, silhouette. Another uh, take on the, uh, Oh, there's him getting shot right through the face, too. Still uh, activating his shields. I do like this area, though. I think this is like got that creepy industrial vibe, right? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Him looking, and you can just see the man in the distance, like, standing. I think it's, like, super creepy when someone's just standing in the distance. Uh, and then there's, like, you know, take a selfie with the guy standing in the distance. Ooh, I like that, where, where I, I tried to hide behind the pole. And it kind of looks even creepier because it's just like he's like trying to hide a little bit. Uh, wow, you can actually look at the detail on, on the edge of the hair. Like that in itself looks like a creepy asteroid covered in like some weird weirdness. Look at the fear in these eyes. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. This guy just looks cool, not creepy. He looks a little scared there, but yeah, I don't know if this is creepy, just like cool industrial, whatever, you know? Uh, okay, now we get to Jameson Memorial. So this is the Jameson crash site. Cool shot. Not creepy. Not creepy. Looks like he's looking at his crotch. I think that is the most creepy that you can be an elite, is like standing dead center and just like facing the camera and then doing a barrel roll <laughs> Ooh, that one we have a little bit of a red tint actually i like this one a lot Ooh, do i like that even better kind of oh okay there we go fix the eye if only there was another little red dot there it would look like a terminator eyes which would be cool i was standing in the uh exhaust Oh, I kind of like this perspective. And then the little guy kind of like looking up. 
Like, imagine seeing that on a satellite image and be like, who's there? Who is that man? Oh, it's just smashed though. Never mind. Two, 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 two. Like, I like it when you get blurry, right? You need a cleanup, homie. I know, right? I need to, I need to see a barber about them hair hair strands. I like this where he's hiding behind the, the barrel. Again, I don't know if this is the creepiest one. Ooh, okay. So now we get to like some cool silhouette work. I like this. I actually really like that shot for some reason. It's not like a crazy unique shot, but there's something neat about it. Something that feels real. Ooh, okay. Which one do I like better over this one or that one? I think I kind of like this one better. Yeah, this one has a little bit more going on in it. A couple different poses. That looks like he's got no arms. That's kind of creepy. That's actually kind of creepy. That one... A little bit. That one... I am getting creeped out by the face. <laughs> it's like he's doing um, yoga. And this is in the comm center, so like, yeah, I don't know if that's as creepy as I wanted it to do. What, did someone just get killed? Eddie, did you blow yourself up? You did, didn't you? Yeah, I kind of like this one and this one. I like how like you can only see part of the face, like the face is obscured in shadows and like, you kind of don't know what's going on in the background. That's kind of cool. That's a cool screenshot. Out of these three, maybe that one? That looks kind of cool. Again, this was from uh, um, the place above the Thargoid site. This is actually the first um, Thargoid site that was ever discovered that was active. That you just shot yourself, didn't you? That's what you get for playing with rockets, Eddie. That's just what happens. So here we got the entrance to a Thargoid base. I like the, the vastness of this, and it kind of looks like an alien... Well, I mean, let's be real, it looks like an alien's vagina, so... Uh, but, like, the vastness of it compared to the person standing in front. That's cool. This is more selfie. That's just goofing around. Again, you can kind of see the vastness, but I don't like the angle on that. That, I like. Okay. This one is cool. Again, is it creepy? It's unsettling. A little bit. Part of it, you know, like, being the design, like, this this big round thing, but it's, like, kind of off-center, and there's, like, some um, asymmetry to it, right? I like this shot. If there was something in here, I think the shot would have been better. This is cool. Oh, yeah, I think I have a lot of these because this effect was so neat. <laughs> this me being like, Eddie, don't you point that rocket launcher at me. Yeah, okay, these turned out pretty cool. I like that. It's like there's a ghost me. Now there's three ghost me's. Oh, yeah. That's creepy. Like, even if you zoom in a little bit. It's like, oh, yeah, that's creepy. I like that. Here's me gesturing. He's like, why? Why you say creepy? Those are pretty cool. Yeah, that effect is really neat. Okay, there's me jumping. That's cool. I mean, again, some of it's creepy. Some of it's just, like, just neat. That's just a nice shot. That's starting to get a little unsettling there with the overlap. Like, it's almost like you, you've you been, like, like this is, like, the killer that's been stalking you, and he's, like, poisoned you, and now you're, like, mind is all... And, Eddie, are you in-game crashing into me? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. People can't see it because uh, we're on the slideshow. We're doing Grandma's slideshow. Uh, this is me pointing at Eddie, who's creeped in the corner, pointing a rocket launcher at me again. <laughs> There's me standing on the sack, and then the sack is no longer there. I missed the uh, the boom boom just a little bit. That's kind of a cool shot. Ooh. I like that. This is very Ghostbusters like, are you a god? Uh, yeah, no. It's like, great. 
when someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes! Again, you jump and just squat in air and it looks silly. Um, but I don't imagine a way that would that you could jump like that and it would look normal. Because people don't normally jump that high. Kind of weird, although it's a crotch shot. Ooh, I like that. This kind of looks like, yeah, like the skeleton's coming out of a ghostly fog. It's kind of a neat shot. I just like how the, the helmet's sort of blank. He's staring into the void. I like that one. This one, cool uh, depth of field or whatever. I like that, like, Thargoid uplink in the background. This one, there's some crap in front of the screen, but... Let's see. Do we, get, do we get any better angles of that, or no? Oh, because I think... Yeah, Eddie, I was afraid of Eddie's... <laughs> Eddie was driving around my SRV. Like, I almost died there. I think he jumped over me. You can actually see me just, like, under the wheel. That was a close call. Ooh, I like that shot. Again, I was trying really hard to get him to look at the camera, but you only have so much head movement, right? And when you're jumping, yeah, it kind of reverses that. Neat shot. I like this. Ooh, I like that even better. It's got like a sort of like Van Gogh kind of feel to it, like almost like it's painted, right? Which, by the way, do you hear they threw tomato juice on the Van Gogh? Thankfully, it had like some glass, so it, you know, it didn't ruin the sunflowers, but I was like, why are you throwing tomato juice on Van Gogh, man? That's a cool shot. Oh, yeah, I really like this one. There's something just like H.R. Geiger about this room that really gives me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies. And then, like I said, it's like that sense of scale, right? Like a tiny person far away from the camera facing either like straight at the camera or away, and then just all these set pieces surrounding them. It's kind of cool. So a few of those. Got this thing looking the other way, like coming out of the basement. I don't think that gave me the sense of basement that I wanted. That's another cool like ground shot. Oh yeah, okay. And then like walking towards the camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I like that. Yeah, that one looks really cool. <laughs> Creeping in the ceiling. Just chilling up here in the Thargoid rafters, you know. Because the patriarchy, duh. Oh, that was the weird ceiling hole. And a shot from the, the weird ceiling hole. Really cool angle. I don't know if it's, like, creepy. That's cool. That's where we started playing with the, uh, the, um, what do you call it? The focus. Trying to actually see, like, does it get creepier when we get out of focus? I like these shots. I don't know if they're, like, the creepiest shots. That one is a little creepy. Because, again, you can just get the sense of, like, what's going on in that background, right? Ooh, I like this one. There's something I just like about the thing. But yeah, it's something I like about, like, out-of-focus shots. I don't know why. That's a nice shot, just of some footprints. This was, uh, right before Eddie ran me over with the SRV. I wonder if I captured any screenshots of that. That's right before the incident. I think that's literally right before the incident. And there we go. There's Glitterbeard spooking me out on my carrier. Who, who wears it better? The skull face or the blurry face? Oh, look at that. We captured it right here. It's 9-11. Oh, man. Look at those eyes. They've seen far too much. These eyes are the window to the soul. Inside the mouth shot? Kind of creepy. Not gonna lie. Within the eyes of the beholder? Ew! Honestly, they they really went and did overdid the eye textures. Those look so gross. Oh yeah, here we go. So this is where I was like fading in and out of Ray Mobula. So that kind of looks like a ghost. It's like ghost passenger. I like that. It's not creepy, but it's neat. Uh, more inside the mouth shot. Through the eyes of an NPC. 
and space pumpkins. It looks like that man's being eaten by the tentacles on top of the space pumpkin. I like the nebula in the background there. These are some really cool shots. I really like the alignment between the nebula and the pumpkin in this one. Like, everything just kind of works out. This rock is a little bit whatever, but I like it. Cool. I like that. It's a little off-center, though. I think I eventually got one. Yeah, this one. Eh, it's kind of happy with that angle, but that's okay. And then we have, like, pathetic little unplump pumpkin, but it's still a cool shot. Eddie shooting with rockets. A bunch of ships investigating the super plump pumpkin, which I think is where we are right now. That was before the fungus was removed. That's just a selfie for the space bank. Yeah, and the sense of scale, man. These pumpkins look cool. And there you have it, folks. That is pretty much... <laughs> I like that shot. It's like an action shot. Like, Ray over here is uh, kind of mid-motion. Eddie's basically poised to shoot him. Spatula's just, like, in, in shock and awe. Doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, I think there's a few good winners in there. I mean, definitely, I think um, some Guardian Sites would be the next step. I think, like, definitely... What's going on? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Is that my SRV? Get back here! Ah! <laughs> yeah, I feel like there were some really good, um... Uh, really, really good shots there. Definitely this has been fun. But, um... It's definitely gonna be time for me to call it tonight. I think, uh... Eddie, get out of my SRV! Give me back my SRV. Are you getting on top of the dolphin? And here's the dolphin of a different stroke. Again, with the ship kits, um, you can really customize your dolphin. I wish there were more. More flavors. We're just shooting Eddie and his SRV. Oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> the Dolphin is actually surprisingly a very hard ship to land on. Just because there's not much, like a lot of the other ships have like doohickeys and stuff that you can jump into and it'll it'll um, uh, uh, sort of stop you. Eddie, get out of my SRV. Don't make me come get it from you. Alright, this is your fault. <laughs> Wait, am I attacking my own ship? Damn it! There he goes. <laughs> you almost had it. Give me back, this is my property! I will beat you to death. Oh god, I, you, you went, I went through you. It's a ghost SRP. Ah! <laughs> I know, GTED, right? Honestly, that was part of the original, like, Bra when Braven said we, you know, like, in the Kickstarter, he's like, you could steal other people's ships, and I still want that. I know <coughs> it's going to be very controversial. A lot of people are not going to want that, but I do. I really, really want us to be able to steal other people's ships. I don't know how they're going to deal with it. I don't know how Star Citizen deals with it, but I know it's possible there. Um, but oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to head back to you, Dinga Bus. Close out stream and we'll uh, jump it back to bubble. So don't 
you know, unless you want to stay out here, don't be, uh, don't be lollygated too long. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff on the, here in the California Nebula that we, you know, potentially could check out, but not right now. Okay, where is Dagobus? Oh yeah, it's not here. It's like a few... Oh, you died too? How'd that happen? What did you do? Here's a nice little system where there's easy... You can park anywhere you want. Just not inside the core of a sun. Oh, that's weird. It put me, like, up in the atmosphere of the planet, but not, like, fully. But that was cool. We saw some really cool sights. I think out of those screenshots, I'll curate them, try and pick out, like, what are my favorite, what are the best ones, and then I'll submit them for uh, stellar screenshots. And I hope I, I can get win a skin. That'd be nice. You don't know? You just died? Oh, you know what it probably was? Because you were in my SRV, and so when I died, it killed my SRV. Yeah. So it probably killed my SRV, and you were in it. So literally... When you steal my SRV and murder me with it, you kill yourself. That's really bizarre how that works, but sure. I'm happy because my Rwenge was assured automatically. <laughs> that is really weird, actually. Yeah, I won't, um, I'm just gonna get to the Danga bus and I'll start the jump, like, after I end the stream. Just to make sure that you guys have enough time to get there. But Eddie, don't get stuck out here. Otherwise, I'll have to come rescue you. I don't have that much tritium left. I need to start actually doing some uh, some more tritium grinding. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked about some of the screenshots that... Um, like, definitely, I think there were quite a lot. Probably, like, 100. But I think there's at least, like, 7 or 8 that are really, really good. I wish I'd played with the... Um, like, the filtering a little bit, a little bit sooner. Wait, you, you died before I did. How's that possible? You hit me with the S with my own SRV. We probably died at the same time. As soon as I died, it instantly set off the uh, the the dead man's trigger inside of the SRV's nuclear engine. Mutually assured destruction, Eddie. Take take uh, leave no man left alive. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can I give you a few units? Of what units of pain? No, 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 it's all good. Oh, like tritium? If you want to, yeah, if you want to donate tritium to the Dangobus, feel free. The Dangobus will take tritium all day. I think there's a buy order for it, too. I'm not sure. I know, I have, like, uh, like, I, I, I filled up the tank before, and I think I have, like, 500 tritium left, but, you know, it's like, uh, I get kind of nervous anywhere below 2,000. I feel like I'm running out of gas. Just because you never know if there's going to be another Golconda and all the tritium supplies will just uh, evaporate due to weird economy and BGS things. I remember during the Golconda, like, you couldn't, you couldn't find tritium within a thousand light years. Like, so for me, it was like, you know, Phil was kind enough to lend me his carrier so I could do supply runs, sell it there. He would sell it back to me at a cheap price. And then I would um, hand it in. And that's how I got my Dango bus. Thanks to the Golconda. Which feels like now, like, how long was that ago? Like, six months? Eight months? Like, I have no sense of, of like, timeline anymore. No idea. But we know the Stargoids are coming, and within the next couple weeks, I have a feeling things are going to start heating up. There's definitely been uh, some new Gal news content. Uh... In terms of like the far god, you've got you know again they're trying to re um, uh, sort of reestablish Aegis, but like Azimuth Biochemicals is all being like, yo, it was like Salvation didn't tell us anything; it was all his fault. Please give us another chance. So there's a lot going on right now, a lot of different characters at play, but I'm very stoked and very interested to see what is going to happen when these Stargoids arrive at wherever they're going, and what the heck are they going to do next. Uh, Hyades Sector? Okay, I can throw that in as a destination. I'll close out the stream and then I'll, uh, send the, uh, Dinga bus there. Is that where your carrier's parked too? 
As long as it's within 500 uh, light years, which is the limit of how far this little puppy can go. Alright, let's hit the bar. Can I get you something, Commander? Oh yeah. Let me, let me give you a list of materials that you can do some grinding for me, if that's okay, little, little bartender man. Oh my god, someone needs to clean these ceilings. Someone call janitorial. We have dirt on the ceilings. This is unacceptable. A clean carrier gives a clean moment, as they say. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining me. This has been Spatula Saturday Stream. We have uh, taken a lot of screenshots, seen a lot of spooky locations. Definitely, uh, there were a few more on my list, so I'll, I'll debate whether... No promises, I'll, I might try to do a Twitch thing tomorrow. If I do, I'll, I'll definitely tweet about it. Uh, so you can follow me at, like, I guess, Spatula007 on Twitch? No, on, on Twitter. Twitch and Twitter, same thing to me. I'm old, what do you, what do you say? Um, but yeah, I'll um, jump my carrier off to this that system, Eddie, for now. I, damn it, they better put a bar on my ship. Do you, not do you not have a fleet carrier yet, Dove? I guess, like, the mega ships, some of them are dockable, and there are bars, so if there's not a bar on the Dove Enigma, that would be cool to see, actually. Because I do like the mega ship bars better than the fleet carrier bars, because they have, like, a little more, um, like, different little booths that look like you can, like, meet with your friends in them, and then you got, like, the general area, you got the staircase, you got the big, the big blue fan. Um, I like that. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining. I'll see you next Saturday. Well, like, well, maybe tomorrow on Twitch. Check the Twitter to know about the Twitch. Or, I don't know, um, set your alarm clocks to Dengis time. Actually, I don't know if I'll stream or when I'll stream uh, tomorrow. But I will stream next Saturday on YouTube. And, uh, and that's it. So, bye! <laughs> okay. Definitely, yeah. Write to, uh, write to Sally and see if, like, you know, like, you can... Like, I don't know, I, I haven't been to Dove Enigma since Colonia, and that was before Odyssey, so I don't know if it is a dock... Like, it is a dockable mega ship. Can you disembark? Can you walk around? Does it have a concourse? I would love to know. And if it doesn't, then I would let uh, Sally know and see if she can help you out. Um, Sally's an amazing uh, community manager that works for Frontier. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys soon. Have a great rest of your night and right, your evenings. And dang us out. 07. Bye.